Oh, let's let's give it a try. So let's see. Oh, Connie, did you, Connie's arrived? Okay, so there's Connie. Oh no, I don't. All right. Dad, no glasses. So I'm just going to do a quick um, review here because it is four o'clock. First time I've been on time, by the way, in, in quite a long time. So I'm seeing that I have myself and Diane on Zoom, correct? Yeah. And I have Val and yeah. Stephen and Connie. Oh, and, and Carrie, of course. Yeah. Yes. All live. And Jesse has just emailed to say that he's running a little late. So we'll see him. So it seems that the only person missing from our from our troop is Abby. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. He didn't feel very well yesterday. Sorry, what, Diane? I, she didn't feel very well yesterday. Oh, no. But Ooh, so goodness. I hope she'll be good today. Okay, well, we we'll, we'll, we shall see. So I guess the first question I have for staff is, are we live? Mr. Chair, we are live. Okay, very good. So it's, um, thank you. And it's 401. Um, welcome to the HTC. For those of you sitting in the room, I'm, and I'm going to assume that there are, I don't see anyone sitting in the room at the moment, but please um, mute your phones and let us know if you're going to plan to record any portion of tonight's meeting in advance. Thank you. Um, because a few of us are on Zoom at the moment, we will do these votes via roll call. I do want to announce that um, these are the following members that are sitting. Myself, Ray Pohl, Stephen Welch, uh, Diane Coombs on Zoom, as I said, Val Oliver live, um, Carrie Thornwell live, Connie Patton live. Those are our members currently. And Abby I'm Camp has arrived. Oh, and Abby has arrived. Hello, and Abby is live. So that means we have the whole group. Very good. All right. So the first thing that I would like to do um, is to uh, have a vote to approve tonight's agenda. So move. Very good, Diane. Thank you. On that motion, Stephen. Aye. Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. So we have an approved agenda. First item of which is public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? Ray, excuse me, it's yeah. Mickey. Hello, yeah. Mickey. Hi, I have a, I guess it's sort of a procedural question. Um, yes. On consent, there is a, there is an application that we felt should be reviewed by the board rather than going on consent. Well, then I would say if you guys have concerns about it, we should pull it. Which one is it? It's nine Twin Street. It's number six. Nine Twin Street. Okay. Duly noted and, and we will pull it. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so everybody note that down when we get to consents. Any other uh, public comment at this time? Okay, thanks, Mickey. We'll be back to you on that. Oh, I, I see a hand raised. <clears throat> um, you wanna unmute whoever you are. I can't see your name. St uh, you're still muted. Okay. Up oh, there. You are. Okay. Hi, I just it's Jenny Clark for 246 Highland. Just wanted to let you know that I'm here if I need to do that now to comment later. Uh, this is public comment. Anything relating to a particular application, you'll be heard at that time. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll talk to you in a little while. Thanks. Yep. Okay, so if that's it for public comment, and it seems it is, we can move on to commissioner comments, if any. Do we have any commissioner comments? Um, okay, well, hearing none, we can move then to our sign agenda. And can we just hear what we have for the three signs that are on the list? Yep, I will. I'll, I'll take it. This is Billy Sadland, you specialist. You. Um, item number two has been continu continued to February 21st, so no action is needed. Items one and three were both held for revisions. Okay, so I think the motion would be for items one and three to hold for revisions. Can somebody make that motion? So move. 
That was Diane's motion. On, on Diane's motion, Stephen. Oh, uh, hmm. Okay, Abby. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. I don't think they can hear me. Ew. Wait, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. He, he can. Oh, all right, so let's see. Oh, I, I was doing the roll call on um, the signs. So it was Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Very good, Val. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. So that means that we have approved, <clears throat> or not approved, but we've continued the two signs. The other one is just holding, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, so that's continued. It for, okay, very good. Thank you, Billy. I just um, have one one more oh, quick comment. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead. No the, problem. Uh, the applicant at 1 and 3 India is a, proposing a freestanding sign at the Athenaeum. So yeah. they are placing a stake in the ground to for viewing at the proposed location. And given the history of the building, the SAC members wanted the HDC members to be aware of it. And if they wanted to go by and take a look, they welcome that. Oh, thank you for that, Billy. Thanks. What, when's that gonna be up? The They've already put the stake oh, in the ground okay. at the Athenaeum. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, through you, if I may. Billy, will you email us the packet for that so we can view it on our tablets? Yep. Thank you. Okay, um, that's it for signs. Now we're on to the consent agenda. And let's see if we have any conflicts. Carrie is it, right? Yeah. I think, okay, so this can be the regular board. So can I have a mo, oh, sorry. First thing we wanna do is um, pull item number nine for discussion. Um, so move. It's six. Right. It's six. It's nine Twin Street. Yeah. It's oh, so six. sorry. Okay. Okay. Item number six is being pulled, and so is the motion to pull that, or is the motion to approve? Motion that? to pull nine Twin Street for review and to pass the consents. All right. So that is Stephen's motion. On Stephen's motion, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen, on your motion, Aye. and I'm in favor. Okay, so now the question becomes, Mickey, and I think I'm going to turn this one over to you. We may have a we may have a circumstance right now where we are pulling something that the applicant thought was going to be consented, so they're not here. So if this is looking like it's going to be controversial, I may want to just hold it. I'd ask you not to hold it. I'm the representative for Nine Twin Street, Linda Williams, for the record. Oh, okay. Well, so you we do have a representative. So very good. All right. So let's hear from Mickey first. I think you should hear from the applicant first, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. All right. Fair enough, Linda. And I, I'm putting it on the record that I object strenuously for a group that is not a formal group to pull an item from there based on some quasi group that they're in. I'm putting that strenuously on the record. Okay. Very good. Because one Thank of you guys reviewed it and said it was fine. All right, thank you. What we're doing is we're adding another window on the street side. It looks at much, much better. There was a lot of shingle around it. As you guys have already approved this structure. We're shingling the rail on the um, deck side, which is interior of the lot. And there's a small kitchen window being added way back underneath the porch. So basically the only thing that's gonna be of an impact on the street would be adding the window you can see the existing there on your can left we up there. Zoom in on the drawing that has the window change. It would be the south elevation, I believe, right there. Thank you. And okay. the existing so is on top. You see the gotcha. previous approval was a lone window floating in that wall. And then we brought it down and added two windows that match all the rest of the windows in the structure on the, there's basically a first floor. Right. It's a very small structure, 500 some odd square feet because of the size of the lot. And um, we pushed it back five feet, so it's not actually at zero, which is what most of them are up there, because uh, you're allowed a zero front yard setback in the ROH. We pushed it back and uh, added an extra window and evenly spaced them, because there's very little light in there because of how tight it is. 
I don't understand the objection. Okay. And I don't think they well, have a right to state well, one as a group or pull anything from the agenda as a group. I, I can't understand it um, because I don't know what the nature of the concern is. So why don't we just hear from Mickey? And, and it's not a neighborhood concern because none let, of them let, live let, there. Let's just keep it. Let's keep it friendly. We, we're just starting tonight. Okay, Mickey, your turn. Yeah. We're, thanks, Ray. We're not concerned with the window. That's that's fine. Oh. It's probably an improvement. If you, there you scroll, go. could you scroll down in the um to the illustration view it makes it a little more clear it's more the railing that we're worried about than the than the windows um, okay if, if you go more down one, a couple more frames piece. you'll see the um the illustration the perspective view there you go right there that's good so you know um in our opinion the changing from a baluster railing to a shingled rail creates kind of an awkward looking negative mass it's like a hole in the side of the building it's okay. To us, it should be remain as a balustered railing. It looks more traditional. Thanks. Roy did that, Mr. Chairman, just to eliminate, go back up to the drawing itself. Roy did that himself. Uh, you know, these guys get a hold of these plans and there they go. We can always uh, run the post all the way down. Roy, just so that I know. Roy's the owner. Okay. He, he, you know, you get a hold of a program, you do these things. Okay. Um, we can always run the trim all the way down to separate that railing. There are shingled rails all over town. To run the, that's the back you can't see it i'm talking about the one to the right yes we can always run the railing the uh trim all the way down so it looks like it was a fill-in okay. and it's in the back of that l there so it's really going to be very difficult to figure out what's happening there so i would just soon throw that on the table of running the trim all the way down so it looks like it was a fill-in on the baluster well that sounds good so now let's let's uh hear from our board members and see see um what uh, comes of that? Who would like to begin the discussion? Um, Holly, we, do you have a historic thing? This was an infill, Mr. Chair. Um, Abby wanted me to oh, sorry. chime yeah, in. Yeah. This was an infill that you all remember um, mm. approving probably what in last year or two? Yeah, probably five, during six COVID. That's ago. all I remember. <laughs> um, so this is a smaller infill lot within the OHG of the fish lots. Um, as far as this um, proposal goes, I didn't have any issues with the windows. I do see the negative mass um, concern that Mickey has and his, his group has brought up. Um, so I would defer it to you all. Um, but again, I would want to um, mention that if there's examples of it within the OHD, then um, it would be nice to bring those up. So thank you, Mr. Okay, Chair. Holly, thank you very much. Okay. Um, anyone care to begin on this one? I, well, I, I can put in my two cents. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go. No, okay. Go um, uh, I um, I agree with um, H. Sab that Sag. that Sag that that filling it in with the shingle wall is making that negative mass, which I think the the balustrade is is more historic. So I, I okay. prefer the actually, original. guys, it's not a negative mass. It's the I understand. It's, it's, I, it's, I understand it create that. creates a negative mass. Okay, because that's all that's over the hanging net. If you look on the okay. one on yeah. the that's a, that's all I okay. have. It's Thank not you. a negative mass, though. Linda, understood. Thank you. Who's next? Oh, Diane, were you? I, I heard you there. Uh, well, I. I could I like the shingles coming down, but that's only my opinion. The other looks fine too. I just think the shingles go along and makes the it makes the, the uh, facade simpler, and you just have that one staircase coming down. Okay, that, Diane. Thank you, um, Stephen. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I, I think this should have been on consent. Okay, um, Di uh, not Diane, Val. I'm okay with it. Okay, thanks. I am too, you know, this is a neighbor of mine, not a direct neighbor or I wouldn't be sitting on it. And I do understand that this is at the back end of that whole thing down there. And I remember reviewing this for the several times that it was in. I would not mind if you brought the corner boards down so that you articulated that as a sort of separate piece, because I do see how uh, it's sort of feeling a little bit modern, you know? Um, yeah. So if you brought the corner boards down on both sides, and I actually, one would actually literally be a post, 
that came all the way down the one at the end. I think that that would uh, be effective in sort of demonstrating that this piece was an infill. Okay, that's okay. easy. Um, what do we think, board members? Make I'll make a motion to extend those the column down on the far left and the one towards the center down to the um, first floor level. So it appears like a fill in. And um, by the way, that's on the west elevation that you yep, just. Yes, west elevation. Yeah. Um, and that is through staff. Through staff. Yep. Okay. So that's Abby's motion on that motion. Val. Hi. Diane. Hi. Stephen. Hi. Uh, Abby, on your motion. Hi. There you go. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thanks for working with us. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me get my agenda here. Um, we had consent with conditions, correct? Yeah. Consent with conditions. Let me review this. And does anyone have a conflict with any of this? We have... Uh, nope. There are nine items on the consent with condition, correct? Right. right. All right. So I, I'm not conflicted and I don't believe any of the board members are. So can I have a motion on that one? To accept the bid Start. as submitted. Okay. So that was Diane's motion to approve consent with conditions as submitted. Regular board. So di on Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Even. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, so that's our consent with conditions. And now let's see, we're on to a, a single old business item that carries us back into December. And my uh, friend and partner in crime, Stephen Welch, would be chairing this one. Do, there you go, Stephen. Each new building. Seven Summer Street. Do I have a different? Oh, I see it. Okay, great. Hey, Ned. Welcome to the HDC. Your your commissioners are myself, Abby Camp, and Diane Coombs. And why don't you tell us what? Oh, you've got the drawing we asked for. Um, so let me just lead into this quickly. Uh, you're proposing to put a foundation, a pier foundation underneath the existing stoop under the door and the shed that's being replaced. Yes, correct. Reinstall the door in the window. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any, any comments you want to add to that? Um, Holly? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for the record, for the commission, this is a circa 1790 typical Nantucket. Um, the appreciate the uh, elevation drawing showing the details as requested along with the grade. Uh, I have a question on um, the door that's in that 12 square foot wart, if that's going to be as previously um, as, as what was there previously, which I believe was a batten door. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, for you? That's exactly what's we're going to be matching the same one. Okay. Just uh, making some repairs. So with this elevation, obviously you don't, you don't see that door, but I think it's, you know, it, we don't want to assume, but um, that was just a, a comment that I had. I want to make sure it was going to be a batten door like what was previously there. I think we do sh should have a detail on it. Um, and then I had a question about this batten door that's shown on this elevation where it has the, the three pane windows in it. it doesn't really reminisce of what was existing in the street view. So I had concern on, was, was there a change there or? No, that's existing. Okay. Okay. And it could be just how um, it was shown on, on the street view. And then uh, other than that, um, the, yeah, you can see in the photograph here from the street view, just looks a little, no, not just down. Yeah. You can see that the, the lights seem to be different. So I just wanted to make sure that what was there is what goes back. Um, no other, no other concerns, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Holly. Um, any questions for Ned or concerns? I have a, a question. Go ahead. Um, the, so the, um, 
the concrete pier on the far left corner there, is that, um, is the foundation going to wrap around that, that one piling there? This one, right? Okay. This looks like it's open. What? Open underneath. So that's there's, a post. There's a foundation that's going to be a post. No. So that's just going to show like simple like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other, anyone uh, else? I'll go, Diane, I'll go I guess with, it's me, you, and Abby. I would suggest that if the door, the batten door with the photograph that we really can't see, what is this? If it doesn't have windows, then it shouldn't. And if it does have windows, then let them stay. Okay. Uh, I don't have a concern with those. Uh, can we get a motion to approve through staff with uh, the door on the shed and the door on the house to match what was previously existing? Yes. I make that motion. Okay. okay. On your motion, Diane? Aye. Abby? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. So now we're along to uh, new business of December 20th. First item of which is uh, Brant, the Brant LLC, um, address six and eight North Beach for Dolphin Court, represented by Linda. And I believe we can have the regular board sitting on this, unless anyone objects. Yeah, we haven't opened it yet. Okay, regular board. So Linda, you first. Um, this is an interesting complex. I think you're all familiar with Pete Kaiser and Thea. They owned um, six and eight uh, North Beach Street and Fort Dolphin. We've reviewed and, a few things for you down here. Yeah, you guys have already approved the um, modifications to six and eight and uh, Fort Dolphin. It's all part of one lot now. It's going through land court to actually remove the lines, but it has been the lines have been removed through the planning board. So it's all one complex. What they would like to do is construct a basically a reception building with a couple of guest rooms in it where people can um, come in and sign in and maybe have, you know, uh, breakfast or, you know, some other thing that they want to serve them in that reception area, be a little recreational area. There is an inset pool in the deck. Because this is in the flood zone, I have Don Bracken here who can talk about um, top of uh, foundation versus the uh, floodplain. And it is a building that is marginally visible from North Beach Street. I just handed out um, an elevation. Steve, did it go around the table? No, I hogged it. <laughs> well, don't hog it. And the architect is here to explain the construction. And that's the view from uh, North Beach Street, the driveway that's in between the two buildings, six and eight now, is gonna be eliminated for a pedestrian walkway from the sidewalk to enter the property. The um, only other access would be off of Dolphin Court, and that was for deliveries into uh, vehicles, and I believe a handicapped space. So the primary view is from North Beach Street, and you're gonna see a gable end of it uh, from North Beach Street. And as I say, it's elevated above ground because of the uh, floodplain and the deck and it contains the pool. Now, if you'd like Don Bracken to talk about uh, why everything's elevated out of the ground, he's here to have that discussion. If you think you'd like to hear that. And the architect, uh, Tim is on uh, Zoom. I can't see everybody up there, but I believe the owner, one of the owners is here, their representative is here and their architect is here. So it may be a good idea for you to hear from the architect and hear from our uh, surveyor first. Is that well, work the for you surveyor, guys? It, Okay, I, I'm gonna just in, in the interest of keeping this short because this is the first review. Mm -hmm. um, if the architect has anything meaningful to say about the design, great, let's hear it. I don't think we need to hear about the floodplain issues in detail because we all know what they are. Um, okay. And we will have those certain considerations that we always have with respect to, you know, uh, a, a certificate and all that. We'll do that later. Um, but I want to get to the crux of, of uh, our review of this um, 
without too much delay. So let's hear from the architect because we do. And then I want to hear from Holly. And despite your objections, Linda, I'll, I will also hear from Nikki. And I will put my objections I, on the record I know. Again I will give you that opportunity. Wait, okay. There's no, a real I, reason for that. This is not in the old historic district. I don't think it's appropriate for them to be opining on it, but that's my okay. objection All on right. the record. So let, thank you. But let's let's cross one bridge at a time. Let's hear from Bergmeier first. Yeah, I think you should hear from Tim first. No, All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's actually uh, TJ DeFeo of TJ. Meyer. No problem, Linda. Appreciate the intro and uh, introducing the projects to everyone. Um, the architecture, uh, all we'll say um, is that we've tried to, um, as you can see in the site plan, there's, a, there's very little space to kind of put the program into the space. We wanted to create a guest house um, or a, two guest rooms um, with this property. Um, adjacent to the existing buildings that we've renovated and that you've reviewed and approved um, and, and create a new welcome area. And, uh, you know, again, for breakfast, uh, for check-in and, uh, and for guests to, to lounge. Um, and so architecturally, um, we took an approach uh, slightly. We scale-wise, we wanted to keep it, in, you know, similar to the rest of the buildings on site. Um, obviously, we didn't want to make it any taller than any of the adjacent buildings either. Um, and looking at it from all the different perspectives, um, North Beach, uh, you can it will be shielded uh, between the gates and the, the vegetation. Uh, same with uh, Dolphin Court. Um, so very, very minimal views from the adjacent streets. Uh, and then on Easton, uh, there's, a, there's a yard um, off of Easton and then two, two structures that actually are sitting in front of the, the the north side, or sorry, the south side of the building, um, as well as a, an existing fence uh, to kind of block that that view as well. Uh, so just kind of give a, a sense of the siting of the building. Um, we've tried to keep it as compact as possible as well while getting the program in there. Uh, it's been designed with the tightest uh, clearances that we can um, and, and still getting it on site. Um, we tried to use uh, cues from the existing architecture um, where the guest houses are, we use the same materials that are on the existing guest houses. So cedar shingles on the building and on the roof. Um, we changed to a vertical board um, on the commercial part of the building just to differentiate it a little bit from the say, same site, but, um, but obviously trying to incorporate um, the same cedar material um, that will naturally weather. Um, so no painted materials, uh, uh, et cetera. And then uh, as far as windows, trying to keep the same perspective uh, as, as the rest of the building. TJ? Yes. You mentioned vertical board, but I'm not actually seeing it rendered. It, 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 or maybe I'm just not looking at the right drawing. Uh, it, it could potentially be just the the, the photocopy of it. Um, yeah, it's very faint on the yeah, rather very faint. Um, So it, it should be in there. We also, we also have included a couple of renderings that I believe are in the packet as well that hopefully will help to, um, to express yeah, you that to you. Um, there you go. There, there's what there's one I think a little further down um, that actually will is a is a head on view that might explain this a little bit better. Yes, thank you very much. Also, in your packets are the views with an arrow from uh, Easton Street from two locations. So if you go through the packet, you'll see the um, the pictures taken from Easton Street. Uh, so you can sort of get an idea of how many buildings are blocking it. So the only thing that's going to be visible is probably the main ridge and marginally the uh, gable ends ridges running perpendicular to Easton Street. Okay, Linda, thank you. TJ, anything else? I, I was just I was just commenting. The last comment I had was on the windows. We, again, picked up on the proportion and size and uh, uh, delineation of the existing property. Um, and also uh, the previously approved color um, on the windows, the Santone. Uh, so trying to keep this uh, aesthetically in line with the rest of the, the buildings on uh, site, um, as well as adjacent buildings uh, on the street. Okay, very good. Hey, um, do you know my friend Dan Brogy? I don't. Uh, he worked at Bergmeier for quite a while, but I think he was probably there before your time. Potentially, yeah. I've been I've been here about uh, just a little less than twelve years, so yeah. He he was probably just going out as you were coming in. Okay. Um, okay. Anyway, um, so let's see, Holly. I believe you're next, right? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, so for the record, the uh, other structures on the lot for context um, is for North Beach, uh, circa 1987 non-contributing structure, six North Beach Street, circa 1947 contributing structure, eight North Beach Street, circa 1987 a non-contributing structure. Um, and also for the record, this uh, structure would have to comply with Resilient Nantucket Chapter 11 for infill architecture. This is in the FEMA AE7 zone. Um, so of course we'll need the elevation certificate and the ferment map. Appreciate the design um, and being able to see the, the other existing structures um, in the complex and the proposed fenestration to match. Appreciate the uh, flanking small masses on the proposed structure um, in keeping with Nantucket's um, additive massing and appreciate the renderings in the um, application. Um, it would be, and maybe this is shown, it's just really hard to see in, in the digital file, but it would be preferable to see or re um, to reduce the size and scale of the structure with its proximity to the other structures. It sounds like that this is a, has been designed to get the maximum, but at the same time, um, to be able to provide for um, adequate uh, life safety for ADA and all that. Um, it would be helpful to see a landscape plan. I understand that's forthcoming in the future for visibility um, of the AC units um, as, as well as from North Beach Street and the visibility obviously for the pool on the front of the building. Um, overall, those are my comments for your, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, we do have HSAG comments and I did want to also mention there was an abutter, I believe who, but I don't know if we received that actual comment. Do you remember uh, that? Or is, or are they on Zoom? I don't know if they're here. They may be, um, okay. but I don't have an actual. Well, let's just, we'll, we'll broadcast that right now. If there's anyone in the thank you, Mr. Uh, Zoom, thank you very much, Holly. Uh, if there's anyone in the Zoom queue that wants to speak on this application, raise your hand so that we can recognize you. Um, in the meantime, I will recognize Mickey as a member of the public um, with any comments that you might have. Thanks, Ray. So uh, there's a short list of items here. Um, starting with the main mass has uneven roof pitches. If you go to the next elevation uh, slide, you'll see the side view. There you go. Mm -hmm. The main mass has uneven roof pitches of seven and 10 and 12. This should be corrected um, by changing the seven pitch to a, to a 10. And you'd probably have to add a, a shed dormer to accommodate the rest. Mm -hmm. The flanking additive masses um, with the rotated gables are inappropriate. The side side additive masses should have ridges parallel to and not perpendicular to the main mass. Mm. Um, despite the various um, corner boards shown on the rear elevation, this is really just one long um, plane, one, one single wall plane. Um, there should be some relief to that left up to that length by stepping in the side additive masses. And the same, same issue applies to the front. Mm -hmm. um, the above ground plunge pool is, in, is enclosed within a huge raised deck, which will be visible from North Beach Street and, and Dolphin Court. Raised decks of this size are not appropriate. The triple French doors will also be visible and should be reduced to a double. Um, the plans indicate a back stairway. Um, this is just a detail issue, but, but the site plan doesn't show the, it's an exterior stair and the site plan doesn't show it. Um, that should be corrected. Um, Say that again, Mickey. On, this, on the rear of the building, on the elevations, you can yes. see probably the floor plan, you see an exterior stairway. Yes. And if, if you go to the site plan, it's not, it's not shown on the site plan. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So in general, this building is squeezed between two other buildings at a skewed angle, which you really, you can, the angle you can't avoid, but the proximity to the other structures could be, um, could be fixed by reducing the length of the building several feet to give it some breathing space between the other structures. It's really squeezed in there. And as a group, we never, we didn't notice the vertical boards, but I'm just gonna add that, that the vertical boards are not appropriate. They should be shingles. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. can I correct something? The rear stairs are going to be removed. They know they have to remove them for uh, setback and other issues. Oh. So the rear the stairs that he's mentioning that he sees that should have been added to the drawing are removed from the drawing, but not removed from the uh, the floor plan. Okay, thank you. And it's, I just wanted to point out again on the 
pitches. We did work on those pitches a lot and we don't want to raise the ridge and we don't think that that's going to be visible at all as to what is happening face on from North Beach Street, which is the primary view because the driveway is gone, because it's just a pedestrian entrance, a massive amount of screening. And it is uh, gable and I would just, you know, that end of the building is facing the street, not the face of the building. Mm -hmm. Dolphin Court, uh, it's, it's more difficult to see in some respects. And we're not saying that it's not going to be visible from Dolphin Court at some point, but this is a mediated settlement on the planning board and in court with Dolphin Court residences, and they are not objecting. Hang on, you lost me there. Like, so what? What was, what was the last statement about? The visibility from Dolphin Court. Yes. You know, it's a traveled way. It's a Correct. private traveled way. Yes. Those neighbors are not objecting to the visibility of this structure from Dolphin Court, and they're the direct abutters. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, has nothing to do really with the planning board or anything. Well, it did, but that's all mediated through other parties. Okay, I got you. All right. Very good. Linda, thank you. Uh, I, uh, Mr. Chair, if I, if I could just add one comment. Uh, of course. Uh, just in regards uh, to Linda, to kind of build off of Linda's comments on the roof pitch as well, um, what will um, unfortunately need to happen, with, uh, one of the reasons why we try to mitigate it with roof pitches is um, functionally to access the upper floor um, we need head height. And so if we don't have head height from, from changing pitch, um, then we'll need to raise the roof, which we also don't want to do. Um, so there's, there are a couple of factors that, that came into um, why those designs were revised, um, accessing the upper level um, for storage and also, um, you know, trying to keep the elevation of the building as, as low as we could. Uh, in addition to the fact that it's a oh, commercial and, building in a yeah. commercial zone, not in a residential zone anymore. It's in a commercial zone. It's a commercial building. It's not going to look like a house. And that's why it looks the way it does. And it's across the street from commercial. It's next door to commercial. It just okay. is. Thank you, Linda. But TJ, you just uh, you just described the uh, challenges of designing buildings on Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping them low, but getting enough head height so that you can actually get to the second floor. That's what this is all about. Anyway, I would like to hear from my board members. Who would like to begin? I will. Very good. Um, okay, let me get back to the plan. So um, the building itself, I think, is pretty inane, given what's around it, but... Um, do you really mean, sorry, do you mean not in, a name? A name means crazy, yeah. like insane. Oh, all right, pretty Calm. modest, oh, or normal, innocuous. boring, whatever. Yeah, okay, <laughs> innocuous, simple. Yeah, okay. Um, however, uh, if height is an issue, you have an 11 foot first floor, so you could drop that height to gain height and change the roof pitch on the second floor. My biggest objection to this is the pool and the doors and your renderings, um, I think, really express why, especially the nighttime picture. They're not French doors, they're nano doors. So they open wide open. And why is there not a railing across the edge of the pool? I know nobody can get there for a safety reason, but I think that would go a long way in hiding this pool because there's probably going to be lights on at night. Well, that that's help. my comments for now. Yeah, well, that, that very well said, Val. Thank yeah, you. That will help. Um, who who uh, is next? Well, I'll go. Thank you, Diane. Go ahead. I think the the nano door with the lights on at night you can already see that it's going to catch your eye from from sort of far and wide. I think there has to be something uh, protecting the that pool and perhaps the, it shouldn't be so big that it takes up so much space it's as wide as the uh, almost as wide as that whole building there I think that it's a little I don't know the batten doors with the big X's on them I don't understand those 
if it is, if they want batten doors, they should be regular batten doors with the X's on the inside, not on the outside. Um, Do you understand so that your comment, TJ? You're muted. I got it. Okay, no, I, I and I do. I understand that point. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Go continue. And I, I think that the the pool business, we've never had one like this up on a thing and right down and on. I don't care whether it's commercial or not. It, um, we still try to have good commercial areas, not flaunting everything i think the pool needs to be reconsidered as it fits in there what what they're doing with all the beach chairs or pool chairs is making the pool the front of the front not the not tucked around and back mm. i i i don't think that that is appropriate in nantucket commercial or not so that's that's all for the moment. Very good, Diane. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Abby, are you ready? Yeah, um, I think it's an odd entrance to walk right into a large deck with a pool. I think it's, uh, I mean, I've never seen that before. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to see it from any public way. And But, you know, I think you're probably saying it isn't, but it's a very strange entrance. Um, I think... I think the building itself is is oversized and should be scaled down. Um, it's a very very tight layout. Um, I I would prefer to see maybe a simpler one story building. Um, uh, maybe this would be more like a secondary building on the site at, with a pool, like a recreational building, um, rather than making it like an like a is it the fourth building on this site? I mean, it's they're practically touching. So I think scaling this down uh, would be um, would make it a, a more successful project. Thank you. All right, thank you, Abby. That leaves you, Stephen. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure. I'm looking at a pool that's 120 square feet. Is that correct? I believe it's small. Uh, TJ can answer that one. It's small, that, very small. That's right. Yeah, it's actually it's 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 probably smaller than that. It's only nine feet deep uh, by about twelve feet wide. It's hundred. Uh, Don Bracken just said it's one hundred and twenty square feet, and it has to be elevated because of the floodplain. The okay. Okay. Requires okay. It. Thank you. And it's eighteen hundred and thirty-four square feet building proposed. Yeah. Okay. So I'm. I don't, I just wanted to make sure I was wasn't looking at a different plan than Diane was. No. Um, okay, so um, I don't disagree to the extent this is visible, it's inappropriate, but I don't think it's going to be visible. Um, I think it would be appropriate to have the patio area staked, and we could do a view of that area. But, um, I, I, and my other comments relate to, I think, primarily the structure. This is clearly um, sub subordinate to the existing structures on the lot. However, it is very large with what little space is left. Um, I think it would be appropriate to see if not the main mass uh, first floor structure height be reduced to see the uh, wings reduced in height by about a, a foot to drop the uh, ridges down and the uh, top plates um, maybe even a foot and a half, you're still going to have nine foot or nine and a half foot ceilings in those bedroom spaces if I'm reading the plan correctly. Um, I think this concept of the open rail, did I understand that what I'm seeing in the HDC 8201 uh, that allows us to see the doors um, on the north elevation, is there a rail going to be there or not? TJ, it was the proposal was that there was not a rail there. There's no uh, rail required from a safety standpoint, and then the the intent was that um, guests on the on the on the ground, um, as well as people in the pool, could uh, converse um, and and you know talk to each other. So the intent was that that be open um, where the pool is, 
Um, but of course, there's always considerations. Um, thank you. You're two inches above code requirement for rail in that location. <laughs> so just so you know. But I, um, I, there's, I'm just, sorry, there's no walking surface at that location. Let me look at the pool plan. Pool's almost zero edge there. Oh, it's right up next to it. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be your infinity edge. Stand corrected. No issue with that. Uh, <clears throat> let me back up the elevations. Uh, you know, it's not our purview. You're going to have some difficulty with the maintenance of the structure, the way these, um, the left and the right gable forwards are structured into the main uh, mass. But um, my primary concerns have been stated. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and most of my concerns have already been stated, but just to sort of uh, underscore what my concerns are. First of all, I think the vertical board is inappropriate for as a, as a skin on the building. Um, the pool, particularly without the rail, is an issue. And I'll just forewarn you that if you do put a rail there, then I think you're in violation of a commercial pool code, which has to, you have to have uh, a shelf that somebody can grab onto rather than just a rail above that that happened down at the uh, Nantucket hotel before it was the Nantucket hotel. Um, <clears throat> I also agree with the roof pitch thing and, and Val's observation that I think you said 10 foot high ceilings on the first floor um, that can be rectified, particularly given that the staircase is going to what is the legal code staircase is going to what is now labeled as storage. And I think the stair could be reconfigured in such a way that you could do something with the roof pitches. And I also do <clears throat> have a concern or uh, an aesthetic issue with this idea of these two uh, flanking gables that are perpendicular to the main gable. I think that it would be a more quiet building if you were able to run the gables in a different direction. Understanding, of course, that... Um, <clears throat> The, the gables are running in the shorter dimension. The ridges are running in the uh, longer dimension of those two side wings. So it's uh, that's a problem for you guys to kick around. Um, that's the extent of my comments. Um, so what do you think, guys? Should we move for some revisions? Do you yes. want us to stake it? Somebody mentioned staking uh, the Stephen pool did, area. Stephen did mention a staking. And by the way, I thought that was a fabulous idea. So I'll stake the uh, middle of the... Um the two flanks and then the edge end of the main mass and then where the pool is. Pull in blue. Hmm? Did you say blue marking tape to it? I like orange marking tape. No, it has to be blue because it's a pool. So does somebody want to make the motion for me? I make the motion. To okay. Uh, and, and, and some staking of the pool. In, in the building. Pool. In blue. The, pa the patio in blue. and the the patio and the or the uh, deck and the pool is that just not the building? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's Diane's motion. On that motion, Stephen. Aye. Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. And on your motion. Aye. Thank and you. And I am in favor. Thank you, everyone. Chairman, through you, may I please ask TJ to say hello to Mike Davis for me? It's Carrie Thornwell, <laughs> and he was my thesis advisor 26 years oh. ago. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yes, I, I sit next to him, so that should be easy enough. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, moving right along, we're, we're now moving over to, to 246 Highland, and I... Um, don't want to shirk responsibility, but I do need to recuse from this because I am the architect for a neighbor who is concerned about um, what's going on at this project, and I don't know where that's going. So I'm going to recuse. Stephen, if you could carry this one for me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Carrie, you're going to sit on this. So you'll sit on both. All right. Uh, Matt, once we're up, why don't you take the floor? 
Uh, before we get started, we're going to lay out some ground rules. Um, the applicant's agent will present their uh, materials. Um, we will ask questions if we have any. We'll hear from Holly. We're hearing from you on this one. And um, then we will take uh, comments from the public. Comments in all regards will be limited to uh, architectural elements under the purview of the HDC. We're not gonna get into discussion about matters that are not part of the HDC purview for a couple of reasons, but primarily because it could taint the outcome. You might have comments that have to do with something we, we do not have any regulatory control over. In an appeal, it could be used to queer the outcome, which is to say that if we're considering noise or um, other elements uh, that could be argued to have biased our opinions. So we're gonna have zero tolerance for that. We're gonna talk about what are architectural elements, what are appropriate with respect to building with Nantucket in mind. We're not gonna talk about the philosophy of building with Nantucket in mind. We're not gonna talk about what the HDC's responsibilities are. We're gonna talk about the architectural elements of the structure with respect to building with Nantucket in mind. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, after the uh, public speaks, the applicant's agent will have a, a moment for a brief rebuttal comments to inform the board. Um, and then the commissioners will, will state their concerns. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, can we start at the site plan? I think that'd be helpful. It's not me. Okay, so um, looking at the site plan, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the location of the, the parcel. Uh, it's an oversized parcel. It actually could be three individual parcels uh, for the sake of this application and, and this project. It's going to be a single parcel. Uh, and this project that's before you or the structure that's before you right now is the main dwelling. So just to give you a little bit of background on the structure or the, the parcel itself, there is a 25-foot uh, deed restriction. It's not a Nantucket zoning restriction. It's a, a deed restriction on the back of the property, and that's highlighted in uh, a light red color. Um, the stipulation with that is that no structure uh, in that zone can be higher than uh, 16 feet, I believe. So um, just kind of put that out there. Uh, the property is for uh, an end user. It's for uh, two siblings, and uh, they're intended to you know, build these two structures for both of their families. And so the first structure you're gonna to see tonight is the, uh, what we're calling dwelling one that faces on Highland Ave. Uh, as far as the structure is concerned, we've provided to the board uh, through supplemental uh, material, just showing figure ground uh, drawings of all the structures in the area. Just to demonstrate that these two building footprints are in line with the adjacent structures. It's not an oversized structure. Um, if we could go to the front elevation, that'd be great. Excellent, thank you. So as far as the design is the, of the structure, we've also included um, supplemental uh, photography of houses that are in the, in the area, both uh, on Cliff Road, uh, Lincoln Circle, any uh, immediate architectural context that we thought was relevant because we used a lot of those structures as the antecedents, if you will, for the design of this structure. So as far as the structure is concerned itself, um, we tried to establish a primary mass, which is the center gable, if you will. Uh, that's the tallest uh, ridge height, which is at about 29 feet and change. Uh, the remaining sections of the house are story and a half. So the two secondary gables drop down to, I think, 24, 6, and 25 feet, respectively. And that was intentional. We wanted the house to actually step down as we worked away from the, um, from the main mass. As far as the details are concerned, it's, uh, it's cottage corners. We've got some second floor swales, two over two windows, um, some banding, and uh, a column detail that has a slightly more ornate language. We didn't want to overdo it. We tried to balance the, the subtlety with some level of detail given the neighborhood. Um, as far as the rear of the structure, I don't think much of that's going to be visible. Uh, we do know it's going to be visible from both Highland and um, 
cliff, I would say. Um, and so as such, what we tried to do is drop the architecture uh, and the massing as, as the house uh, worked itself away from that center primary mass. Um, there is French doors in the back of the building. The idea being that a lot of the common space is on the back of the house and we kind of use the structure to delineate, delineate between public and private. Um, so there is you know, more fenestration on the back of the structure, but I think it's not gonna be highly visible. Uh, we tried to minimize the amount of second floor decks and um, I'd say our probably the most important thing for us was trying to create uh, a hierarchy of massing uh, so that it fit into the context. So with that, look forward to comments from the board, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, are there questions for Matt on what he's presented? None? Okay. Um, well, yes, yeah, sorry. Go well, ahead. The secondary mass, you've got the primary mass at 29.2. The secondary mass is what, 26? Uh, 24 and 20, 24, six and 25. 24, six and 25, okay, great. Okay, any other questions? Okay, are there any abutters here to speak? Okay, we're gonna take abutters first. Hello. I'm sorry, I can't see oh. you. Could you state your name and your street address for the record, please? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is uh, Ginny Clark, uh, 2 North Cliff Way. Hi, Ginny. We're property. Thank you. I'll try to keep my comments within the proscribed discussion areas. Um, I guess my main comment is that, that I think this is under HVC purview is to have a main mass house and then a secondary house, which Typically in the neighborhood, um, you can definitely tell which the main house is and which the secondary house is. This design to me looks as though there are almost two main houses or primary houses. Um, and it, it's hard for me to just see which is the secondary house. And I think that's within the purview of HDC board to, um, to determine that. I'm certainly not an architect and I can't comment on the architectural design of the houses, but I just think the, the scale and the massing don't really reflect the other uh, houses and um, secondary houses that are in the neighborhood. And um, most of the secondary houses are smaller in scale. I think that's probably all I have to say other than um, I I'm the one that put the deed restriction in the property. And I know you don't want to talk about the deed restrictions, but the, the existence of the cabana in there has me a little confused, but I think I'll probably address that when that comes up for approval. Okay, Jenny, uh, thank you. You were well within the bounds. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. I could have gone more, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, just to be clear, it's not that we're not sympathetic or empathetic. It's just, it's a matter of process. Um, Holly, yeah. is there anyone else? No, okay. Anyone in the audience? Steven, it's Mickey. Hey, Mickey. We, we have some comments. Oh, I didn't think, I thought you said no when I said, oh, I apologize. Uh, no, uh, Mickey, I, I, would, I took uh, Holly out of sequence. I'm gonna have her speak first. I'll Good. come back to you as a member of the public. Good. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I just want to give some historic context. The previous houses that were on this lot were a circa 1970 structure that um, you all approved for demolition in 2021, I believe it was. Um, they were um, modernist architecture. Um, then let's see, the proposed house is very large and grand for this neighborhood. However, the height of 24 feet, nine inches, the ridge is appreciated. Um, the style proposed though, doesn't warrant a roof walk right on the ridge in the middle of the gable. Even the newer structures within the um, last decade uh, that have been infilled within the cliff area, which obviously this is an infill. Um, have more traditional style architecture, massing and fenestration of six over six or six over one. The perspective, excuse me, site plan is telling and as proposed overhangs, overwhelms, excuse me, I can't read my own proposed overwhelms the neighborhood located just outside the OHG, but a historic neighborhood nonetheless. 
appreciate the nod to the shingle style, um, but don't believe this is an, an actual appropriate location for this being proposed. Um, understanding that this is um, a you know oversized lot that is understood, I do think there is merit of looking at the size of our, of, of the structures um, in relationship to the um, this location within um, the historic district. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Holly. Uh, Mickey. Sure. Thanks. So um, to start, you know, this is a nicely designed house, but the massing does not relate to any other house in the Cliff area or Brand Point. It would be better suited to a more rural area with larger lots. The front facade is very wide and should be reduced considerably. Most other large residences in the, in the area extend to the rear instead of to the sides. The secondary masses on the sides have forward projecting gables, which compete with the main mass, creating a very complex facade that starts to have a somewhat hotel-like appearance. The roof walk is too wide and should be reduced to eight feet. And that's it, thanks. Thank you, Mickey. Who would like to go first? I will. Okay, Vail. I'm very familiar with this neighborhood. I did five houses on Highland. Um, it is very large in terms of ground cover compared to the, the other houses there I went through. And um, it's at least double the size until you get to like Lincoln and some of Kapam. But on Highland, it's, it's very large. I um, actually wrote some notes here. Um, the impact of a new building is, the impact of a new building is largely a question of its design. Does this design possess a common identity or spirit shared by the buildings in the area? Does it harmonize with the special character of the site and street, streetscape? Well, there's lots of examples of two and three story massing in the area. It's about the scale and the elements of the facade that are, make something compatible with what's, what setting it's in and what's surrounding. The proposed high style vernacular is not typical of this area, except out of town, and it's introducing a new genre on the edge of town. It seems out of proportion and modern. The roof walk's not appropriate on this house. Simplify overall, more one-story additive massing. Additionally, it, it should be remassed because it's 90 feet side to side. Maybe an L shape would help mitigate its impact make it more compatible with the adjacent buildings and follow traditional forms and fabric patterns, street side, building alignment, scale, and details. Thank you, Val. Abby? Yeah, Val sort of nailed a lot of stuff there. Um, I just, I'd written down that I, I just think it's too big, too long, too long a ridge line. Um, there, there's no additive massing. And, and I was, I've been looking at the elevations and the perspective really makes it look like there is more additive massing. But um, when you're looking flat on, it looks like a straight line. I think that the roof walk is inappropriate. And I, I've got uh, this thing about seeing the short end right on top of the gable rather than the long way. Um, so I don't think it really works. Um, in, in talking in general about the site, this, this main mass, like, I, I think it's got to be reduced in size and scale. It really does look like two main masses. And I think what bothers me about the layout of its garage, I'm not sure whose garage it is, but the layout of the whole thing right in front of the other building, I think that's odd. Um, and um, so I would like to see, you know, some reduction in scale. Thank you. I'll go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the building is too long. And there's no following what everybody else has said up to now, there's no additive massing. I think that the windows are are cold looking. It has it has no sort of warmth of the building when you come up to it. 
I think the the uh, roof walk is inappropriate. It doesn't fit in. It's the building is not the the architecture to have a roof walk. I think to give a lift a finger up for Johnny McLaughlin, you will see that none of the do dormers come down to Johnny's line. And one on the left hand side uh, is no, maybe it's the one on the back. The two roofs coming down on that west elevation on that three dormer thing. The the left hand side is not the same length down that the right hand side is. I think that's really weird. Um, so I think the windows either need more trim around them or something, but they're just, they just don't look like anything here. And I think that, that the windows is, as I think Val said, should be a six over six or six over one. It needs, it needs to fit in much more in the, in the area that is, is up there on Highland Avenue and, and the surrounding area. This, I don't think there are any building quite as, as cold looking as this one is. So that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I don't have that much to add. I think everybody sort of nailed all the points. Um, I think the roof slope also needs to be worked with. It comes across as so contemporary. This is a classic neighborhood. And the length, the 97 feet long on the street is really not typical. I understand this is an oversized lot, but nobody's really gonna know that. Um, and you should take a look at what's happening there. It's more front to back rather than stretch because you also have another building there. So it's a whole, a whole, length of the street is big is going to be big building and i think you could sort of play with it to mitigate some of that um excess but i agree with all the details about it okay thank you so matt a few things working in concert negatively here i think it, first of all it's i think it's a handsome structure um maybe you'll uh, render in a light blue in the future so as not to be cold looking but um, it's handsome, it's kind of grand. Um, uh, the things I think are working negatively are, as have been stated, but just to summarize, it's visually it's involved. It's the massing, it's the detailing, it's the roof pitches. Um, and, the, and then on top of that, the length is working against you. So um, I think you're getting a call for simpler, a simpler structure, simpler presentation, um, and maybe a less uh, linear uh, orientation. And um, I will comment that the concept of the, one of the dwellings being subordinate is, as you know, Matt, important to us. And that's something we'll be focused on when we're looking at the two of them. Sure. Um, how about a motion? Actually, could I just yeah. comment? Yeah, please. Um, could we pull up that uh, figure ground uh, image if we could, that supplemental? I just want to respond to some of the comments about scale. That's a great shot. Um, and there's another one too. But basically, I think what this drawing demonstrates is that th these structures that we're proposing are well within keeping of the immediate context, 100%. I don't think this structure is twice the size of, of the other structures. I'd also submit to you that there are um, a lot of the lots that are adjacent have been subdivided that are literally a third of the size. And they actually have a house that's almost the same footprint as, as either of these, these structures. Can we go to that next slide that shows uh, without the satellite? Uh, not that one, next one, please. Uh, well, since we're on this, we can hold here for just one second if that's okay. These are all structures that are in the area. These were literally house designs that we pulled off of. And I would actually say that there is a certain level of, you know, size and scale to these structures. There's a certain level of classic ornamentation. Um, you know, the idea that this structure is modern, I, I certainly 
you know, wouldn't use that term to describe this, uh, this structure. Um, but again, if we could go to that other slide, I think it's the third one in the sequence. Well, here you go. So these are, uh, this is a figure ground of the area. And again, I would just point out that if you look at some of these other structures, in terms of footprint size and scale, these, these two structures are not, you know, double in size. I'd say that they're completely contextual. Um, just want to point that out. And yeah. As far as presentation on the streets, we, we can certainly look at that. But I just want to rebut the, those, those few comments. I think that, you know, we've, I don't think ornamentation or detail is a, is a bad thing. Clearly, you know, over ornamentation is, is one uh, path, if you will. But I don't think that this house falls into that category at all. I think it strikes a really nice balance. I also think that the addition of these details contributes to the context. It actually contributes to the, the architectural fabric of the island, specifically in this, this area. Um, so those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Matt. Well, I'm, given the fact that we do have a, a new um, procedure in place, which is material changes within three meetings, um, I'm gonna entertain if anyone wants to make any additional comments, um, hopefully to your benefit based I on your last comment. comment. Carrie, um, and then It's Bill. really exciting. This is Highland, it's not Kapam and it's not Lincoln Ave where there are grand facades to the street. This is Highland and granted it's nearby, but you have to take in consideration this street scape. And that is, I think you could, yeah, I think you could reorient it and be much better off. Okay, thank you, Val. Um, I think what also is, is lending to the size of this house is the, um, the porch is all the way around. The rear porch is 18 feet deep. Um, I think that just exacerbates the size. And I just went by assessor square footage for the footprints, it is, almost a thousand square feet bigger than every other house on Highland. Okay. Reference the drawing. Any other comments? So Matt, I, I think for me, uh, Carrie summed it up, is this concept of what uh, the presentation is from Highland. And that's where the length comes into play. And then as a result of the length, I think the um, detailing you know, the fact that you've got the three gables forward, these, these visually involved elements start to come into more focus. Um, whereas in orientation, if you turn that to North Star, where though there are structures that are nearly as long, if not longer, it tends to become less of an issue. Um, I realize you're working with the lot you're working with and so on and so forth. But I wanted to clarify my comments on um, being visually involved and that it does relate to the presentation along Island. Um, the only other thing I will comment is the, that porch from the west elevation, um, it shows is 18 feet deep. I think that's one Val's referring to on the first floor. And it, it does look, it does present as overly large. Um, on the other hand, I think that the covered porches add a sense of additive massing to the structure that are important and necessary. So clearly there's a balancing point you need to find. Um, do we have a motion? Motion to hold for revisions. Okay, on, uh, uh, Diane, on your motion? Aye. Uh, Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. Carrie? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right. We're gonna take a five minute break. We are because there's pizza here. We're no pizza. way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I Could somebody send me a piece of virtual pizza, please? Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. have to send you a, a virtual. <laughs> Do a screenshot and send it to me. You die in here. Did you mute us? Ray. No. Ray. I got some new I got some new pencils today. 
for drawing. Which kind? And they, they, well, they're watercolor. Oh. You can, you can, you can draw with them, and but you there can mix with water with them, and it becomes watercolor. It's very interesting. I've heard of those. And the nice thing is you can actually put them down dry and then like take your finger with some yeah. water and, you know, smear them around a little bit. But they just came. I haven't really had time to fool around with them. I have to find my pad, but it looked really good. I'm trying, dying to try it. Yeah. Watercolor. I, I used to do watercolor all the time and um, loved it, but it's, it's a difficult medium. Yes. It's Usually very, I do it really very unforgiving. Yes. But they were just too tempting. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they have these um oil paint sticks now. And I have a friend uh, who's uh, he's mainly a sculptor, but he, he likes to paint, but he he paints with the sticks, and it's the same sort of thing where you you don't, you just take this big sort of giant crayon <clears throat> and you rub it around and it's putting oil paint down on the canvas. And then you can like smear that if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have to try, try them out. But I've been watching it and it finally got to me and I just said, ah, I ordered them. So I'll, yeah, my weakness is art supplies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All these notebooks and sketch pads and everything. Uh, well, you were, Diane, you were right about the COVID. So I'm feeling pretty good, except it's really gone to my throat and, you know, a lot of phlegm. You, I, I, I still have it. And Zoom, I, but uh, gosh, yeah. I've been, I've been two weeks out of the hospital. And I still have that. So try that. Uh, Mucinex. I, the Mucinex. And if you if you don't like that or you use it up, they uh, Stop and Shop makes a coffee soda with low sugar, but it's sparkly, and it will it will help you cut the phlegm in your throat. Coffee make, soda. Yes. And so it has caffeine in it. It has a little caffeine and it has very little sugar. So well, that would be appealing to me, except for the fact that I can't really have that much caffeine. I have a little bit in the morning, but beyond that, I, you know, it, it gets to me. Yeah, well, I don't it's think there's very much. I'll, I'll look and see, but it it does make the throat smoother. From oh, flat. Val, Val's telling us we're not muted. And so if you see Val, tell her that I'm aware that we're not muted. <laughs> we were just chatting, that's I'll, all. I'll, I'll, I'll mute, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, I'm sure they're chatting about us over there while they're eating their pizza. Yes. Um, oh. Anyway, I, I will mute now. <laughs> <laughs> she did a yeah. smiley face. Okay. Bye. I'll, we'll talk soon. All right.
Five thirty. Good evening, Matt. Good evening. Welcome to the HDC. It's good to see you again. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed the break. When you're ready. This one's going to go super smooth. I can feel it. Nice. Um, feels warmer in here already. It does. I got some food. Um, okay. So with your permission, I'll Please, start, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Okay. So um, this is the second dwelling. It might be helpful too to uh, scroll to the site plan just to show where it sits on the property. Uh, I don't know who's controlling the screen. Uh, if we could just go to the site plan, please. So just to show you where the location of the structure is. So in terms of the overall site, uh, we do plan to come in to the, uh, with the garage structure, which sits uh, uh, on Highland. And again, the idea being that the facade on Highland, and I know we touched on this in terms of the elevation uh, that sits on Highland for a dwelling, uh, the, the primary dwelling, uh, but that the garage would be a secondary structure, be in the range of around 24 to 25 feet tall. And that this structure uh, sits behind that structure. So I don't think that this is gonna be overly visible and it was uh, intentionally placed in this location so that it wouldn't be a, a read as kind of a second structure on the property. Um, or on Highland per se. So uh, with that, if we scroll down to the uh, south elevation, can you see, please, yeah. A2.1. Uh, so the drawing on the drawing one is the, uh, the elevation. Uh, again, 
you would see this if you were on the property. Um, and uh, obviously the architectural details uh, emulate that of the primary dwelling um, and fairly straightforward, you know, column detail, uh, window type, two over two, cottage corners, um, same rate profile um, is carried over into this structure. Um, the second elevation on this page, the west elevation faces in to the interior courtyard, if you will, uh, of the property, which is on the back of the property. I'd also point out too that I know that there was some discussion about porch depth and size. Um, and But those two porches, and this would apply to dwelling one as well, that these are on the back of the, the structure. And so we don't feel that these are highly visible. I'd also say with um, if the sun's stronger these days and, and there's a uh, higher, uh, there's more requests for larger outdoor uh, spaces that are covered. And so, you know, being relegated to an eight foot deep porch doesn't really cut it in terms of uh, an average uh, furniture setup. So um, we do have some um, French doors that face uh, the interior of the property, those open up onto the yard space, the green space, uh, again, uh, that are located behind the structure. So the visibility of this, I think, is fairly minimal. We also intentionally step down the massing as the structure works its way back towards the, the rear of the property. Um, the plate height drops on the secondary mass, and then the rear, uh, what I would call tertiary mass, is literally just a one-story structure. And so we worked to uh, similar to the main dwelling, set up a hierarchy of masses where the primary mass is um, taller, some in the range of like 28, 29. I think, believe this is 28 and change. Uh, but then as the structure works its way either to, towards the back of the property or to the sides, it drops down to store and a half, 24 feet, or in this case, I think somewhere in the range of 16 feet. Um, so with that, look forward to comments from the board, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. Uh, before we take Holly's comments, does anyone have any questions at this time for Matt? Okay, Holly. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that this is also a corner lot. So visibility that you wouldn't necessarily see on a side um, will be visible if it's not screened. Um, I just want to mention that appreciate the um, the overall um, placement location changed based on the um, the private deed restriction that is not enforced by town, but um, should be seen by, you know, the, the owners. Um, overall, the size and scale of the second dwelling is massive for a second dwelling and should be reduced in size and height. Um, those are my overall main comments. Um, and I appreciate that the architecture is in line with the main structure as they should. However, um, again, it's very grand. So those are comments, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Holly. Uh, a butters, is it Jenny? Is she still here? Uh, yeah, no, I have no further comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, any Thanks. other members of the public, Mickey? Yep, we got something. Go ahead. Um, it's, it's brief. Um, this is the second dwelling and it's only six inches lower than the main house. Uh, it should be lowered at least a few feet to reduce its scale relative to the main house. And the secondary ridge toward the rear, which is kind of in the middle of that lower elevation that you're looking at, um, should step down considerably more to help reduce the overall perceived height of the building. And that's it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Who would like to begin? Bill. Bill. I think this should be the main dwelling. But it. To me, this is more in keeping with the, the hood. It goes front to back instead of side to side. Um, and my concern really is, uh, do we, do you guys have a landscape plan yet? Uh, not yet. Okay, because <clears throat> uh, the visibility uh, I'm struggling with, uh, I know there's a fence there, but this is quite set back from the fence. So I think- Hi guys! Yeah, I literally crossed the what? <laughs> Wait, we could use more of that at the HDC. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so <clears throat> that's my comments for now. Okay, thank you. Abby? Um, I'm still digesting uh, the moving parts on site, and because of the 
Microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, the um, where where the buildings are cited on 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 the site. Um, I th I think I'd like the front of this. Um, I like the front elevation a lot, and it's reminiscent of Lincoln Circle, um, one of those ones with the big black shutters. Um, some Victorian up there. So um, yeah, and I and it does go back, and it re so instead of going sideways along the Highland, which I think is more appropriate for this streetscape. Um, so I can't, I can't really, with I can't think about them separately. So, um, but if that garage in front of this elevation is, is bothering me a little bit, I wish they could be sort of juxtaposed uh, so that you could see the front door um, instead of at an oblique angle. Um, I think the east elevation could uh, gain some character and like H. Sag said, um, additive massing, more difference between the two um, massings would be appropriate. That's all I've got so far, thanks. Okay, thanks Abby. Diane? Diane, you're muted. Yeah, I heard that. My dog was barking and I- That's okay. Uh, um, I like this building, surprisingly. I like it and I think it would be good as the primary. I, I would just, some small things, for now is on the waist elevation. I would like to see the, the dormers, the big one on the left has come down and I think the windows would be separated some to extend that eave that goes across. Um, I'd like to see the roof the eave on, on the roof eave to come down. Not that that doesn't look like even a foot. If it came down more than that, then then you would have the, the tall main and then the, the secondary one coming down and then the little one on the first floor, the 16 footer. I think that would fit in making this field like a like a smaller building when it still has the size. I think on the site plan, um, that garage from what Matt said quickly said that it was going to be between 24 and 25 feet tall. Uh, maybe right where it is sort of to the left of this building wouldn't be the appropriate place to have it or maybe I don't know where it would be appropriate but maybe not there I think that uh, having it if it has an apartment in it I guess it can be 24 feet but I would like to see it smaller so it's not uh, competing with the one story uh, pieces of this building I think this is much more workable than the other one. And with just a little touching up here and there would fit in. Thanks for now. Thanks, Diane. Carrie. Um, I have an issue with the height of this thing being almost 29 feet tall as the second dwelling. I feel like they shouldn't have subdivided. They should have, if they want to have houses that are similar in height, the primary and secondary dwelling, this doesn't really work. I agree with everybody that this is the more manageable building, but I do think that your secondary mass, the cross gable on the longer elevations, that plate needs to be lower than your main mass front uh, south elevation. 
Um, so it's kind of backwards for me uh, in terms of those Blade Heights and Eves. I think that was the general consensus. Um, but yeah, I think it just needs to come down quite a lot. 20% smaller than a massive house isn't that <clears throat> small. You know, the bigger the main house, that means the second dwelling can be the size of the main dwelling right next door. So I think we've got to think about that and more first floor or one story elements. I do appreciate the one on the back, but on the main house and this house, I think we should see some of that um, from the street. Anything else? And, well, no. I just wonder how tall your second floor windows are. I mean, they look six feet tall. No, you don't have any scale. I was trying to scale a few things, but you have eight foot first floor doors. And then what are the windows on the second floor? Because they are, they read very long. This whole thing could shrink by quite a lot if you just let the space yeah. be a little more dynamic with some <clears throat> interior ceiling heights not being so huge. How big are those second floor windows? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, uh, but I could, I could I provide that for the next uh, yeah. submission. It, yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other comments, questions? No. Okay. Matt, uh, this is, I think, well, there's not a ton to add to it. I think this would present better along Highland. Um, more appropriately and size wise, it does seem to be the more appropriate larger structure. Um, so you kind of got a lot on your plate with these revisions. Um, in revisions, I would ask that we get a uh, dimensioned window schedule and a cross section. And I'd like to, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, have that retroactively apply to the main house so that we have um, that information when we're reviewing it. Sure. Um, other than that, I, it's, it's a handsome design. I think, um, I think it's very workable as it is, but not as a second dwelling. Okay, if I could, Mr. Chair. So yeah, go ahead. what I would do for this one, I mean, obviously given the, the lot configuration, um, I appreciate the comments from the board. I'll start with that. You know, we'll definitely focus on dropping the height. I think we can certainly do that if that's a consideration. Our, our thought process here was because it is a larger overscale lot that there would be some latitude with the, the second dwelling, but here, here are the comments from the board. Uh, in terms of the orientation, I agree that this orientation works really well for this structure. Uh, but again, I would just say that, you know, compositionally, we have to think about the uh, site as a whole and given its shape and size that lends itself to a more linear um, you know, primary dwelling, if you will. Having, I, I did hear the board's comments about trying to uh, break that up or, or change that. Um, so that's all I'll say. Okay, thank you, Matt. Great. I have me? a question. Wait, L, sh L shape works great. Okay, Val? My question is on the... Um application it says white clapboard but i can't see where that is on. um i don't I, that might be a an error okay. but i don't think there's white clapboard okay anywhere okay Unless um, you want it do you want white clapboard no <laughs> no <laughs> how about a motion motion to hold for revisions okay uh on diane's motion diane aye Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. Carrie? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Okay, Matt, thank you. Stephen, thank you. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is, Now we're on to five Broadway. Do we have somebody to rep? Am I off? No. Five Broadway. Yeah. It's, a, it's an old building that, that clearly uh, they're interested in doing some work to the foundation because it's sagging. But do, do we have somebody to represent this one? Yes. I'm here. It's here. We do. Is that live or on Zoom? Good evening. Hi. So this must be Jeff, right? Yeah. It is. Okay. Very good. 
Um, okay, Jeff, you want to walk us through this? And by the way, you once again have the regular board. Um, so in, I agreed to take care of their house about a couple of years ago and they noticed, and we noticed that one of the, you could roll a bowling ball from uh, West to East. And I really, I've built about 12 post and beam homes. Hadn't really done any work on this house. Uh, long story short, they and myself just want to support and preserve. Um, if you're out there right now, it looks like a bunch of moles have been digging all over the place. I've had plumbing department asking me if I'm doing plumbing. Um, we dug a little uh, on the east side to see, uh, sorry, south. So this, you see this picture here, southeast corner. Um, and I think I put in here, we did like a laser survey about a year ago. Um, maybe not that long ago. From the... Uh, chimney foundation, which probably is the deepest foundation at this house. The rest of this house is on rock piers. And it appears that as work was done over the years, people dug out places that as a post and beam, the support should be uh, under the post, we would all agree. Um, and looking underneath now, as I've looked, there's places that people must have dug to get access and rolled rocks out of the way and didn't put the rocks back in. So if you look at this south wall here in the middle, there should be a rock there. The two main sill beams go, and, you can, and there's a, you know, where the two meet, there's nothing underneath there. And where this arrow is, that part of the building compared to the uh, chimney foundation is down seven inches. Um, so we dug a little bit next to there, and where the fence is, somebody... There was a, the rock there it goes down about maybe eight inches into the dirt. And we pulled the fence post out next to it. That goes down three feet. So what seems to be endemic at this point is every time somebody dealt along the east side of the building, let's say to put, so this is the west side of the building. This hasn't settled much. This is maybe two inches from the foundation, except where the door is, is maybe about three or four. Um, on the east side, primarily, um, where they dug, if you go back to the pictures where the electrical service was, uh, if you can go back to more of the east side there. So if you look at the southeast corner, so on the left there, that's down seven inches. The other corner is down about five. And all along where the door is, it's down about the inside corner is about six inches down compared hey, to- Hey, Jeff. Yep. I'm going to cut you short and I'm going to tell you Go why. For it. So it's, it's very obvious to me, and I'm sure to the rest of the board members, that what you're dealing with is a, is a settlement issue on a very, very old house. So the, the real question for us as a board is going to be, what do you propose to do about this? So the proposal is to leave the rock piers. Yes. And put two foot by two foot concrete down at three feet and set the rocks back on top of that. Okay. So essentially, are you going to shore up the entire building? On the east side, we're shoring up. You're going to shore it up on the east Correct. side. Okay. Shore up, support, and preserve. So we're not cutting anything out. All right. Since I've been underneath, uh, somebody did some work in the past. All three primary sill beams, the six by sixes, have been removed and are gone. And somebody put in four by six. In and four by six beams in place of the sills that are missing. Correct. And okay. they didn't tie them back in. They just kind of put some brick holding things up. Well, how do you propose to tie them back in? So I have, because I've been digging underneath, yeah. finding this out. I took a four by six. So I'm leaving all the old beams. Yes. And I'm putting it below. So there's a 20 foot east to west existing beam that was just being held up by some bricks. Gotcha. And uh, I've already had two people say, oh, just cut that out of there. But there's this great 20-foot beam. Only the last three feet have a little bit of uh, 
decay. Okay. And we've put a four by six PT underneath that so that okay. we've jacked to keep the building from falling down anymore. Mm -hmm. And we can just tie that. We can peg those two together, the replacement and the existing. And if somebody wants to come back in years from now, they could Dutchman in and do something. But we haven't cut anything out. The owners don't want to get rid of anything from the old. So we're really just supporting from below and putting some um, two foot by two foot um, footings down at about three feet and the existing rock piers. And when we fill the dirt back in, it should all look exactly the way it looks when we started. Okay, that's all sounding very good. Now, the one last question that I have before I turn mm -hmm. this over to Holly and the rest is in doing this work is the plan to remove the amount of uh, sag that's happened or leave it at a stasis, leave it where it is now? We want to come up part of the way, about half of that, to get it out of the dirt. Currently, the east side bedroom is sitting in the mm -hmm. dirt. And you it needs mean, to come you mean up at the least. The floor three. level is actually at the level of the ground. Well, on this side, it's like, let's say this is like three, it looks like three inches. Yeah. About, if you really go underneath, there's about five inches of clearance under the building, of clear air. People have just kind of put rocks around the edge of the building yeah. and the landscape yeah. has come up. Right. On the east side, it's actually sagged into the ground. Right. By five inches. So of the five inches, you want to raise it up two and a half inches. Did I get the math it's right? Down on seven. We'd like to come up about four. Okay. Wow. Because right now what's happening is the building is separated. The post and beams up top. Yeah. Pulling apart. So we've lifted it up at this point. We have raised that side about two inches mm -hmm. to have the post and beam come back into line on the inside. Got it. Okay. Well, so you've given us a good general overview of what you're hoping to achieve here. Um, so what I would like to do is, is hear from Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so for the record, this is the Prince Gardner House. Um, it's individually significant to our local and national district. Uh, there's an old HDC survey on file that indicates that it's as early as a, a, a circa 1740, uh, which make, would make this structure almost 300 years old, uh, 283 years <laughs> exact. Um, we do have an updated Form B from Sconset Trust um, that they've submitted to MHC making this actually a, a 1797, but regardless, this is an oldie um, <clears throat> pre-revolutionary war era structure. And I would note too, that it was originally built as an imitation of the early whale cottages um, of a T-shaped configuration that was built. And that's per Henry Foreman, um, architectural historian. Um, obviously from staff's perspective, concern with the structural integrity of this historic structure appreciate the photos and the datum info. Um, and as an individually significant structure, um, it would be very helpful for a clear understand. I think I got more out of what you just said, Jeff, than actually looking at the application. Um, you know, how will these rock piers be stabilized? Um, what does that look like? And I believe that this should be documented and and excuse me, and proposed to be to bring those um, cell beams and joists out of the dirt. Glad to hear that the owners are wanting to retain as much as the historic fabric as possible. That obviously is important. Um, but knowing exactly where um, the you know the, the configuration is going, um, understand that they're going to be the the concrete pads are going to be going under those those corner piers. But I just think the plans proposed uh, submitted are not clear enough to ID exactly the, the, the proposed scope of work. So those are my comments for your consideration, yeah, Mr. I Chair. Thank you. Figured, yeah, it's, it's uh, well, um, it's very detailed. Um, thank you, Holly and Mickey. And I noticed that Rob Benchley is on. I wonder if either one of them want to. Mr. Chair, uh, Rob is here. Yes. Okay, okay. Rob, uh, if you can unmute. And <coughs> Hello there. Hi. Hi, uh, uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, a few of our um, uh, 
Wisconsin Advisory uh, Group uh, took took a look at this, and uh, we're very happy that it's uh, back in your hands. And uh, we have no concerns except that, obviously, for the House's sake and history, we'd like to have it done as right as possible. Other than that, we're good. Rob, thank you. Um, yep. I, I think that those thoughts are definitely congruent with what we would be thinking, which is this is all sounds uh, like good stewardship of this building, um, particularly the fact that the old stones are going to be going in on top of this concrete shelf, so to speak, that's underground that we won't see um, so that we can still have the same look of the building. And I do think like Holly, that what we would need is to have some sort of document. Mr. Chair, could yes. we could we so, get a chance to speak? I don't mean to interrupt, but we've been going pretty long here. Yeah, man, go for it. <laughs> Your turn, Stephen. Yeah, it's just it's just you know. Your turn. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I think look, the, I think the the element we're missing is a cautionary element. This is an as built work on one of the most historic structures in that area. And it seems to be kind of, we're missing that. Um, so I think that we need to address that. Uh, we're limited in what we can do. I don't think it should be punitive, but it needs to be addressed. Um, I presume it will be through the fee, which is, what's the- Could, Can I ask a question? 10 times that. Um, drawings, clearly, foundation plans, um, something that shows us a cross section, a detailed plan, uh, a first floor plan that shows in detail what's gonna be retained, what's not gonna be retained. Um, I think that's where we start with this. What, what, are, what are we finding for? <clears throat> no work has been done yet as far as I know. Um, no, there was a stop work order put on. The, there was work going on, Mr. Chair. Oh, I, I was unaware of that. Yeah. So this came in as a complaint. This isn't a fresh. Gotcha. I walked in the door. Okay, this is what I'd like to you. do. All right. Thank you. Um, who else? I'll go. <clears throat> Thank you, Diane. I, I <clears throat> hold on a second. <clears throat> I know what he is up against. Uh, I've had a house that had to have it done. I think his plan we're doing it all interiorly. It's very good to sister up the beams that need to be done. Uh, and with the plan written out so we know what rock is going back where and what, what walls are going to be upped and what ones are going to stay the same uh, would be a good plan. What he, what he is asking for architecturally is good and engineeringly is good. So just with more uh, respect to drawings of that and and to say it and to give us some idea of what it's going to look like on on the outside, I think is important. But I think the is basic concept is good. Okay, thank you, Diane. Abby. Yeah. Um, so, um, so um, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, putting a fee on this one because it might have been something. It sounds like it's something that had to be done to, to sort of not an emergency, but just do something quick to. Um, it's not like you. They were trying to get away with something. So I. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That we don't have those pictures. Oh. Yeah, I, don't, I think maybe we need to be better informed. Oh, because the drawings don't. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, they just show the existing. But um, so I think Matt, going. May, may, I, may I, Mr. Chair? I did, to, yes. to... Oh, Holly? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Sorry. So this was brought to the commission, was it last week? And these photographs that you're seeing right now were shown to the commission. Mm -hmm. um, what you're seeing before you in the packet 
is what he has submitted to try to justify what the work has, that has been proposed to be done and that has started to be done. Just mm -hmm. to clarify, I hope that helps. Okay. Okay, Thank you, more. Abby. Yeah, just, uh, okay. Um, so going forward, thank you, Holly, for pointing that out. Um, going forward, I'd like to see drawings of exactly what the foundation will, will look like and how it will be stabilized. Um, but you seem like a sensitive person that's going to do the right thing. So I just would this like to- This is where we started digging down, the rocks dropping, the whole house is- Can you let, Let's let Abby finish, please. Okay. Yeah, so, so just going forward, I'd like to see the drawings, um, what you will be doing going forward. Um, what, what will that foundation look like? And so this is- but no, 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 no. Listen to Abby, and yep. then we're going to hear from Val. Okay. So that's but that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Val, your turn. I have nothing else to add. I, I all right. We just need to have it return back to looking similar to what it was, and um, I think the the fine is um, not enough, but that's what we charge. So anyway. Um, meaning that you're okay with the fine. Yeah, it's five, it's only 500 bucks. Right. Okay. Got it. I just want to make sure. Thank you, Val. Okay, Stephen, you want to make a motion? Uh, yeah, a motion to return with uh, floor plans, foundation plan and section uh, floor plan indicating where the existing will be retained and where um, elements will be replaced and what they'll be replaced with. And um, we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you, Stephen. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, see you next time. Thank you. Now we're on to new business. Of quick question. <clears throat> what? So we keep talking about what's going to be retained. Everything's being retained. We're simply no, no. From below. We've, we've already made a motion. Okay. So. You just need to take what we've said and, and run with it. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're moving on to new business of January 10th. Uh, Ethan, are you around? Good evening. Me or the other one? What? It's Ethan me. Griffin, sorry. No, no, I'm okay. Yeah, Ethan's got to be here, right? It's the Ethan hour now. I'm here. I'm going to sit Can off Mr. Chair a couple. So some, some. Okay. Of the that's, Hey, by the way, did Jesse ever show up? No. Right. No. Okay. So Connie, you ready? Connie. Yep. Okay. So why don't you sit on the first two at Academy lane? Okay. Should I start, Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead. Thank okay, uh, Ethan Griffin, uh, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a, I think we're gonna look at the renovation first. Um, this is a 1980s uh, home um, and the owners are looking to change the current attached garage to um, living space and then add dormers um, to the main mass. Uh, sort of uh, adding a little bit of a sort of bungalow style detailing. Um, it's an otherwise uh, fairly kind of banal structure. Um, and I think it should be pretty straightforward based on the elevations. Okay, thank you. Holly, anything? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so yes, this is a non-contributing Cape, um, circa 1981. It was in its own right an infill within the OHD. Uh, this is in the Wesco Acre Lots section of town, um, and there is an HDC survey on file, which non-contributing shouldn't, <laughs> nonetheless there is one. Um, addressing the gable end of the garage addition is appropriate, I will add. However, the proposal to change the dwelling um, in parking, adding a fence and arbor requires its own COA application. Just want to make that clear. Um, the dormers should follow building with Nantucket in mind and um, 
reduce that shingle area around the windows um, to follow the guidelines. The French doors on the west, um, I believe they may or may not be visible from Lily Street looking up. Um, I, I tried to look on Google Earth to see if what I could see um, without physically going out there to look at it, but um, that might be um, visible. So in, in that regard, if they'll be visible, they should be changed to 12 light with a kick panel, which is consistent within the OHD. Uh, on the north, the proposed change to the, to the roof line looks a little odd. Um, on the west, the fa that's facing Academy Lane, the change to the existing bay window, I feel is, is modern and, and loses that character that I believe is trying to emulate maybe like the 20s. Um, and I believe there was, was there vinyl of some sort? I have on here, no vinyl fenestration should be allowed in the OHD. Um, if there's vinyl proposed, even though this is a non-contributing structure, I don't believe that it should be appropriate. So those are my comments, and I know HSAC had comments as well. Okay, Thank Mickey. You. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, the shed dormers on both sides, the, the new shed dormers on both sides, overwhelm the roof plane and should be reduced a couple of feet on either side to reduce the shingle area, as Holly stated. That's it. Okay, thanks, Mickey. Board members. Could I have clarification? Sure. Um, what do we see from Academy Lane? What, what, what? Um, um, actually, if you look at the site plan, the first sheet, um, there should be a view, a photograph, um, literally. So that's, that's really what you kind of see from Academy Lane that's looking at the driveway. Um, certainly that uh, type two picket sort of goes along and then Academy Lane ends at the end of this lot with a house. Right. So this so is really the most visibility. South? Would you say that south? Uh, it's or? kind of going uh, west. And you're looking at the south, essentially, the south side. Okay, so from Academy Lane, we're looking at? The southern, southeast southern. elevation. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, do you want to continue, Abby? Well, um, so okay. I'm just looking at the site plan, and I just want to understand this. So the so you're you're where the garage is. You want to put a driveway. The the current hard there's about a thousand square feet of a concrete sort of hardscaping. That's the driveway that's going to be removed, and the garage doors will be removed. We're proposing a, a side door with a little um, roof over it, and then the parking area is really going to be limited to just what we need for two cars off Academy Lane. So we're significantly reducing the amount of hardscaping in that area. And the garage is. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. We, <laughs> this might be confusing. I apologize. We submitted a revised site plan for the shed application, okay. uh, which, which may be uh, sort of confusing things. Um, but the, the goal is to, to really reduce the amount of, um, of concrete that's currently there in terms of the hardscape. Yeah, right? I, I appreciate that. I just, um, now it looks like the shed, proposed shed is like, right looking at that kitty corner this um unless wait, wait, we're hang on guys guys we're, we're talking about the house now not the shed right right i'm well i'm it's just that i think the shed is obscuring the front of the house but so then let's talk about that when we talk about the shed what, what we're talking about right now is the revisions to the building Okay, well. Well, all right, so do you have anything to say? Yeah, further? I think, all right, um, moving on from that, I think somebody, maybe Holly mentioned the north rear where ending roof line. Um, is that, not really sure what's happening there. It's not obvious. Is that a, a dormer coming off that salt box roof or what is that? He's breaking the back. So it's lifting up? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that red line shows what existing line. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's an odd house to start with, so it's hard to sort of get my bearings here. So, um, why don't you go to somebody else? Okay. Um, Diane? Yeah. <coughs> I... Uh... I'd like to see those dormers come in. The uh, 
one of them doesn't look as if it was was three feet from the edge. I guess that's the west west elevation. I think the French doors there should probably have a kick panel if it's going to fit in with the surrounding area, which which not neither of the sides of the building face Academy Lane, right? They well, face the, the south does. The south faces Academy Lane. It, would you substantiate that, Ethan, please? Sure. Um, yes. Only the south elevation faces Academy Lane. The um, east elevation faces the adjacent lot. Uh, the the north elevation are in the north elevation and the west elevation are completely nested in that. Uh, to the west, you're down um, to Lily Street, down the hill, and I, yeah. I can't imagine there's any visibility. And then the same thing on the north side, there's a rather large estate that's behind this house. Um, right. So I, don't think there's I just sort of I was having trouble placing it in my mind. The, uh, because then the south elevation is what faces out to Academy Hill. Correct. Academy Lane. And... Uh, the you've got at least the drawing is small on my iPad, so I was, I guess where the, you have two windows and a door, and a little uh, fence right there on the side. I don't know would what is under moving. Is anything else going to be touched except what you've got uh, clouds around? which looks like everything but i think the windows up on the second floor of the south elevation should be split if you if you're thinking about that and the uh i'd like to see the south so it would be the west elevation how that roof changes leverage coming down and you have the dormer, which is the one that we said to make smaller. I'm just having a hard time seeing that um, north, that north elevation with the with the change in the the roof on the west on the yeah on the left. I'd 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 like to see the dormers come in and and. Uh, Make the the front door is there. Then you've got the the one that's tucked in. I, I I'd like to know what we see from Lily Street because it's hard to know what to do. So right. that's it. Thank Not you. Good. All right, Connie, your turn. Um, I concur about the dormers. If you can reduce them, I think that would be good. I'm just curious about what's over the two doors. Is it just a little roof? Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a little roof with, with brackets to support it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all really. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. I'm ready for a view. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody want to make a motion? By the way, uh, Ethan, you had me at just reducing the the two dormers in with <laughs> I thought we were close. Just like H Sab and, and Holly. Um, so somebody want to make a motion here? Make a motion to hold for revisions. Uh, do you want to throw a view in there? With with a view. Okay. All right. On that motion, Connie. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor. All right. Okay. Let's Thank see. You. Now, should we, what about the shed? Should we have that to track? It's basically a shed that's sitting in the front. I think the view would be good to see it. So maybe we should yeah. track. It. All right. So you let's, should. let's have that to track if you don't mind, Ethan. All right. Did, can somebody make that motion? I make that motion that we Thank track. Thank you. On that motion to have a track, Connie. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Stephen. 
Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor. All right, now we're going to move to 35 Monomoy. And Carrie, you want to sit on this one? Sure. Thank you. How about Jesse too, Mr. Chairman? Sit off. Is Jesse here or yeah. there? Oh, I was told that he wasn't, but that's fine with me. Okay, Jesse, you're on it too. Thank you. And welcome. Okay, go. Okay, uh, Ethan Griffin, behalf of the applicant. This is a uh, actually two lots on the corner of Monomoy Road. Um, they're uh, essentially the house, uh, the whole facade is a giant white painted white clapboard. Um, the owner wishes to add shutters and uh, change the front door and then add shutters to the front door um, in sort of an effort to kind of break up what is now a rather large expansive white on the front of the house. Um, there's limited direct visibility um, unless you're on the lot, but nevertheless, there is some visibility. We provided pictures from the street, particularly winter where you can see through the privet. Um, and then we've also provided some examples of, you know, sh similar shutters and, and color um, configurations that already exist in the Monroy area. Um, the proposal is to have the shutters on the doors exist, you know, basically during the off season, and then they'd be on pintle hinges and be potentially removed um, in season. Uh, and then the shutters, of course, would be um, functional shutters that would remain in place all year round. Did I hear you say that you're going to put shutters on the front door? Correct, like louvered shutters over the, the front door and the side lights, yeah, so, which there's an elevation that's provided. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, got it. Yes, all right. So that's the on the in the off season thing. Correct. Gotcha. All right. Um, Mr. Okay, Chair, this, yes. I, I do have comments for your consideration. Oh, okay. Um, and, and mainly, and I know this is outside of the old historic districts, but it is within Monomoy Heights, which was goes back to 1850s. Um, there is an HDC survey on files, shockingly. Uh, this is a non-contributing house, but it has a name. It's a circa 1988, the Christopher Murray House. Um, and you all, I think, uh, recently approved some modifications, I think, in the last year or so to this um, mm -hmm. dwelling. Staff's comments, uh, shutters on windows are a character defining feature of many of the Monomoy Heights uh, contributing structures. Um, obviously the, the question is, are they appropriate on the door? Um, if it's in the winter, wouldn't see that as a problem and actually would, would be um, so much protection. Uh, regarding the door change, I believe the door as proposed is very modern and not appropriate for this, vernac for this type of vernacular of a house as this was um, indicated as a post-war traditional uh, structure. My recommendation would be to keep the door as traditional as the previous one uh, with the lights proportionate to the 12 over 12 double hung windows, um, not as proposed. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair, All thank right. you. Thank you. Who wants to start? Carrie. I'll go. Um, I'm not opposed to the shutters, but I think with the big white face of this building and Folger Blue, it's going to be very bold. And this is such a simple sort of Quaker face to the street, but I just worry about the, the color being too much. And I totally agree with Holly on the door style. It just doesn't work. If the shutters on the door are temporary in the winter, fine. You've got light fixtures on either side of the door. You don't want, you can't mess with those. It's a wide door, so you need the lights. Um, yeah, I think just the tone down color would be better for me. And what what is the current front door? Six six panel. It's six. There's an elevation. I don't know. If I see know. it in the upper. Yeah, it looks right. like six. Six panel door. Yeah, six a... panel, and then it's got transom and side lights mm -hmm. around it. Oh, I see. You're eighty sixing the transom. All right, um, but you would prefer to see it return to that, Carrie. I just think the door that he's proposing is not in keeping with the 12 over 12 windows. Okay. I mean, maybe, I mean, I'm not opposed to a different type of door, but just what he's got, the glass sizes are not traditional. It just doesn't seem to go for me. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Jesse. 
Um, I I like the the proposed front door. Uh, certainly a much better improvement than what is there. The transom uh, is a little awkward, and uh, I like the three lights versus the eight lights. Kind of goes with the windows. Uh, maybe somehow you change the paint size a little bit to match to be a little bit more square, but I overall I like it. Um, I'm okay with the shutters, and as for blue. Uh, shutters, yeah, that might be a little loud um, and um, open to some uh, subtler suggestions. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Abby. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I, um, this is going to, this is pretty high profile being on a corner. If I got it right, sort of on a corner. So um, I, I like the original doorway. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think it's quite beautiful and simple. Um, I'm not sure, Folger Blue is a very strong blue. So I think something toned down or maybe no shutters, but um, I don't know. I guess I just like it the way it is. So sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abby. Diane. Diane. The, the, I don't like the the new door. I like the old door. And I the blue shutters, I think uh on prospect right where you have uh there's a white house on the far side of the street or the town side of the street that has blue shutters and they are they're very good. They're, they're not overpowering, but they're they catch your eye and they're good blue. Um, see if I can come to mind with the actual address. But if you drive down there, you can't miss it. And it's uh, I like the shutters on this on this thing, but I would have one suggestion of making. The, the windows on the first floor bigger. You've got an awful lot of space between the two windows, first floor and second floor, I think. I think and it's existing, I think, Diane. Yeah, that's all existing, Diane. Oh, and they're not going to change that? No. Okay, well, that's too bad because uh, it, it just would have more power. But anyway, that's my, my thoughts. Okay, thank you. So can anyone tell me the lighter blue, the name of the lighter blue that's approved for doors? Did we say Hamilton blue? Mm, maybe. There... And there's a Newport blue. Um, well, look, let's, let's put it to the applicant. It sounds like you're, <laughs> where you're getting hung up is the, is the color that you chose for the shutters and the style of the front door, which I completely agree with. It's very atypical of the, you know, this theoretically Greek revival building, um, or federal style. Sorry. Um, what do Mr. you share if I may? Yes, go. Uh, so I, I, we'd be happy to add um, additional um, horizontal muttons to, to change the aspect ratio of the lights so they're more in keeping with 12 over 12. I, I don't think, I think that's very doable. And in terms of the blue, we were looking for something that was more that lighter, more subtle kind of grayish blue. The existing door is the color we're essentially proposing. And we thought- We have a photograph of that? Uh, yeah, the first page actually. There's a number of photographs of the, uh, not only of the house, but- What, what, what were you talking about with respect to adding more horizontal muttons? I missed that completely. So I think it seems that um, perhaps the verticality of the light configuration of the muttons and the doors and the side lights, um, it's not as appropriate. Well, that's that's actually wasn't my concern. My concern was that it was just a, a glass door, like a French door for a front door. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Also, Correct. Ethan, so are you making the door so much taller to accommodate that where the transom is right now? Correct. The current door is very short, actually. It's, a, it's about a 6'6 six, six slab. Okay, so you would be turning it into like a... 
It's like seven and change. Right. Okay. Uh, but there was going back to those photos and the color. What do you all think about that? That door color being the shutter color. I think it's too rich of a color. I think cut it in half. The color is fine, but the tone is is going to make this house like a different house. So it's, if we go to the other photographs, there's a there's so it's a dark and simple right now. That this is going to add. All right. If we go to the other photographs, you'll see another house that has a lighter blue. It's the one right at the turn. Thirty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Crossover. Uh, the one, the one that says thirty-nine Monomoy. What's that? Can we? Actually, it's, it's actually a light green. Oh, it's green. Okay. But it's the tone. It's the yeah. It's the amount the lighter of lighter tone is less. I don't know what, how you call that, but it's more of a pastel. It's not quite as rich. All as right. Well, look, I'd love to move this along. You know, if we could. Um, if somebody can make some kind of a suggestion, including the applicant. Yeah. We, I mean, uh, Diane referenced a, a property that she felt had a, uh, an appropriate color. I mean, we'd be more than happy to get the address of that and then just. That's our prospect. It's not a monomoy. <laughs> or, I mean, we could, through staff, bring in a, a, a couple options for lighter tones. I mean, again, the intent was really just to kind of match the door color that already exists but we could certainly go a whole step lighter. But you're um, changing that door out completely. So correct. We just thought for reference. It doesn't matter if you match it, right. So. Isn't there an iconic color? I think the, the door is not appropriate. Yeah, okay. I think we got to move this for revisions. I can't believe we are, but I think we need to see some. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion for revisions and I'll, I'll try to help you with a color. Um, All right. That come up with great. a color that we can look at and Abby's move to for some revisions on that motion. Jesse. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Uh, Diane. Aye. And that White House is right directly across from Moore's End. Very good. Thank you. And Abby on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. All right. Moving on to 30 King Street. Aye. Same board. So, Ray, I think I'm going to sit off for the next couple. I'm back. Okay. All right, Val's back. I drew that house on Monomoy in 1988, working for Chris Moore. Yeah. That's a great, simple. It reminds me of something on the way to Concord, Mass. Yeah. Okay, so here we are at King Street. Yes, uh, Ethan Griffin, on behalf of the applicant, uh, this is an application to uh, remove an existing cottage or studio that's on the property, uh, and then the next application will be to replace it with a studio. Um, should be pretty straightforward. It's essentially a, a gable structure with a little shed mass off the side, again, proposed to be um, removed or demoed. Very good, thank you. Um, let's see, Holly. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, I don't, I believe on the application we are the, um, I didn't know if this was a shed or a studio that's existing. It's a shed. It's, That's what was confusing. Sure. It's, yeah. It, it's oh, it's this, somewhat finished on the inside. Um, oh. We're not quite sure when it actually arrived. We, it's yeah more recent than uh, the, the 60s. But that was my comment is that there's no history on this um, provided. Um, and obviously that would be very helpful, especially being it located within the OHD of Sconset. Um, <laughs> So that was I, my comment. That's it. Uh, okay, yeah, on, Rob. On, yes. What? I'll turn over to Rob. Right, Rob, your turn. Great, thank you. Um, uh, it's fine. I, I'm hoping, um, as always, that this could be reused somewhere. Uh, if we can save it. That'd be great. 
and uh, just to agree with Holly about the details of the uh, the uh, the date of the building. But other than that, it's just rather move than demo, but no concerns with yeah. removal. Very good. Thank Thanks Thank so you. much, Rob. Yep. Okay, board members. What size is it? It's, it's about so 10 by eight for the main sign. And that's got a little shed piece that's off it. That's another four feet probably. It's so cute. Frankincense. I don't have a problem moving it. I hope somebody takes it. I think it's okay. okay, thank you, um, Val. Let's see, Carrie. Am I on this? Yes. Okay, well, I, it seems like it could easily be picked up and used somewhere else. So I would hope that would be the case, but um, I think it's a tiny shed, it could be moved. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, Diane. I would move it too. Uh, well, now I believe if we move it, that's fine, but I believe the application is for a demo move off. Oh, no, we can we have it as a move demo? <laughs> well, you, you mean put move in front of demo? Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Okay. It's listed as a demo move off, but yeah. All right. So you would prefer to have it moved, obviously. Yeah. But you're, are, are you okay with it being demolished? I guess so. Okay. Um, so now who, I'm sort of confused as to who the other associate member is at this point. Connie, can you be the associate? I, I would agree if we could move it. I think that would be nice. It is a cute little building. Are you okay Looks with like the demo? Easy. Should it need come to that? Yes. All right. So I think we have consensus on this one that we can approve a move demo if somebody would like care to make that motion. I'll make the motion. All right, thank you, Diane. On that motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. Connie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. So now let's take a look at what's gonna replace it. Okay, so we're proposing to replace it uh, with a more, a, a longer, frankly, larger, more linear uh, single story structure at the rear of the lot. Uh, it's 13.6 at the highest ridge, and then the secondary ridge is 12.6 uh, from grade. Uh, we are proposing uh, what would typically be seen as more contemporary window style uh, with no Just a little more. Um, it's worth noting that this actually matches uh, the existing house, yeah. which is in front of it. So. There's a house at the very front of this lot that is a historic house. Uh, there subsequently was a two-story structure in the middle of the lot that um, has these contemporary uh, windows without muttons. And this is, again, towards the <coughs> rear of the lot, essentially abutting Wisconsin Woodman in another lot. That, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Ethan. Holly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So yes, there are two um, dwellings on the lot for context, a circa 1938, that's a long King Street and a circa 1975 at the rear, both have uh, HDC surveys on file. Uh, the application, again, I, I think it was, it might've been on our end, but it wasn't clear what it was until looking at it. So it is a studio. Um, the fenestration seems a little chaotic and doesn't follow building with Nantucket in mind regarding the glass percentages and within the wall. Um, and the, I believe that the fenestration and the massing needs a little rework. Appreciate the low scale uh, to fit in with the uh, main dwellings on the lot. Uh, it will be visible from New Street. Um, so obviously that fenestration should be um, reworked at and should be wood TDL in the OHD. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. And I note that um, HSAG had comment, or Sconset SAG. <laughs> and here we go, it's to you, Robert. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, just just exactly what, what, what Holly said. Those were some of our, our ideas as well. Um, following uh, Building with Nantucket in mind, guidelines for the windows. And we appreciate the 
modestness of the house and that it may uh, add to some workforce housing. So thank you very much. Huh. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, all right, to, to refresh here, I wanna make sure that we have the right board. So it's going to be Val, Diane, myself, uh, let's see, we're on the same application. So Carrie and Connie, all right, who would like to start? I have a question. Yeah, Val. I'm looking at photo D. What is the old building that looks like it's going to fall over? Is that that's, on this property? That's the one of the buildings on Scotts of Woodman oh. um, site. So this, uh, so that's uh, you know, there's a bunch of buildings on that site. Yeah. Um, there's the garage bay would the, the building with like the five garage bays would be immediately to the uh, the northwest of this. Um, okay, so it's not this. Okay. I do think actually that there's limited to no visibility. I mean, you'd have to be looking through a house that's on the street that Wisconsin Woodman's on. And then, I mean, this is a very nested um, mm. sort of lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to continue, Val? Um, I, I appreciate the stature and the size of it. I, I do agree with Holly. I think the windows are a bit incongruent and chaotic um, visibility aside. So maybe a little bit of finessing that way, but the massing is good. Okay, thank you. Uh, Diane? Diane? Uh, the windows need some work. And uh, other than that, I'm I'm all right with it. It's it's got a good low thing, and and but all those windows on the right hand side, left hand side need to be thought again. All right, we Diane. Thank you, um, Carrie. I agree. I think the first thing you could do is make all the headers align because exactly. that is throwing everything out of whack. And then just put some lights in there. It's the, you know, one of our ones in the big picture windows. It's not very sconcy. Yeah. Okay. Connie, anything? No, nothing else to add. Yeah. It sounds like you just need to do some little finessing of those windows. I mean, I'm kind of wondering why they're at different head heights. It, it just sort of seems very jarring. Um, Okay, so I think we, we're looking for some very minor revisions on this one. Okay, would it? I mean, if would it be possible to approve through staff just making all the headers the same height for the yeah. windows? I think we're looking for maybe some muttons in the windows, Definitely. and I do. I, 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 I say that even recognizing that this is probably not going to be visible. Doesn't matter. It's in the middle. It's kind of There's yeah, too no, many I'm, different I'm, sizes. I hear you. All right, you got it. Got it, Ethan. Thank you. All right. So can I have a motion for some minor revisions? Motion to hold for revisions to the fenestration. Very good. Thank you, Val. On that motion, Diane. Okay, let's go to Carrie. Aye. Thank you, Connie. Aye. And there's Diane. Yep, thank you. Diane and Val. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, good for that. And now we're going to move on to head of planes. So should we shift the um, associates now to, we'll take Jesse, which would mean the board would be Val, Diane, Connie, and Jesse on these, these next two. Okay. Okay, go for it. Okay, uh, so there's two applications for this site. Um, this is a four head of Plains Road. The owners actually own 28 Sheep Pond Road, which we've got a photo of on the site plan. The original intent uh, was to actually move 28 Sheep Pond to this site. There's already a, uh, a cottage that was built and sited in anticipation of that, uh, I think a couple of years ago. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be feasible to move 28 uh, sheep pond to that uh, site and 28 sheep pond is, is imminently going to be in the water. Um, so this is a proposed main house for the site. Um, 
there's an existing solar ground solar array that we're proposing to move to the roof. Uh, the siting is somewhat limited um, in terms of there's a fairly significant MESA boundary um, that we're conforming with, um, but we are trying to push this whole structure essentially towards the center of the lot. Um, it's 25 feet to the ridge, meeting uh, the village uh, height overlay district guidelines. Um, let's see, it's about 240 feet from Sheep Pond, uh, or I'm sorry, Head of Plains Road. Um, obviously visibility is fairly limited if you're familiar with kind of driving around there. Um, although the most visible um, sort of vantage point would be all the way down at Sheep Pond um, where the road sort of ends currently. Um, we've provided some different, you know, number of different views from, from roads in the area as well as sort of a mock-up of how this is going to sort of peak above the brush. Um, an example of, of similar structures. Uh, it is a sort of a two-story main mass with story and half um, elements on the side. Uh, and then a large porch with, you know, the focus of the glazing is really towards the water side, which is the south. I think that's about it. Uh, it the color's gray. Um, and the roof is a proposed asphalt black, um, which matches the cottage uh, and is uh, anticipating the solar array being integrated. All right, thanks. Okay, who wants to start? I will. Thank you. I think it's nice. Um, if you look at the house that was gonna move over there, this is delightful. <laughs> Meaning the other one wasn't so? No, I, it's it's nicely masked. It, it's I think it's appropriate. Okay. It goes with the cottage. Thank you, Val. Who's next? I'll go. Thanks, Diane. Go ahead. I think I think it's good. I just wondered uh, what the height of the garage was. Uh, well, we're going to get to that next. Oh, okay. All right. Well, the, then the, this is fine. It will look well out there. And it's going to have solar panels on it, right? Yep. On a black okay. roof. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Um, thank you, Diane. Connie. I have no issues with this. Very good. Thank you. Jesse. Uh, very nice design. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Ethan. I think you have liftoff. Motion to approve as submitted. All right. So Val's made a motion to approve as submitted. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Very good. Connie. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Uh, Val on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor. All right. Now we'll look at the garage. Yeah. That's not the garage. Oh, that's that's the a former submission. All right. House. And I am in big trouble here because I didn't put a height on the garage, but the garage will be not to exceed 22 feet. It says 21 six on your application. Oh, there we go. There you go. So this is a uh, garage studio structure. Uh, it's basically a single bay uh, with enough room to kind of get a stair up to that uh, second floor open plan. Um, details, colors, all to match the, um, the main house. Okay, thanks, Ethan. Board members, same board. I think it's, it's, it's okay. My main concern was the verticality um and it would there be any way to perhaps break up the north which is the side that faces the road with maybe a little tent roof over that or or wider or something yeah i don't think he can go wider wider would be ideal but um that's a question for ethan <laughs> okay. Get a little porch roof and have bikes under it. Um. All right. So Val, thank you. Um, Diane, you ready? 
Yeah, I I thought of the same thing of making it a foot or two wider. It would make it smooth it right out. Uh, I don't know whether those dormers on the second story make it awfully heavy. Maybe just have two, one over the east one on the first story. It's it it makes the whole building top heavy, I think. And uh, taking off the middle the middle window and each thing would not make it so so busy up there. That's all I would think. Okay, Diane. Thank you. Connie. Hi. Um, could you possibly put like a little shed roof to park bikes on it just to kind of take away some of that verticality? Yeah, we, we would absolutely consider that. Uh, we are somewhat limited, although it is a big lot with the ground cover. Um, so making it sort of wider is going to be difficult just a porch roof but yeah i love i yeah i think we can put the little pen roof over the front of it um and, and looking at it i think we could even drop the plate the main knee wall down like six inches to get it in line with the meeting rail to the windows uh, so i think that might help mitigate some of the height okay um was that it connie yes jesse uh, i think that's a motion um, well, I'm, I'm troubled by the verticality too, and I don't oh, want to just sorry, see a front roof over the, um, front, over the garage door. I think it needs to be more holistic than that, more to like lessen the extent of the dormers, bringing the ridge down so that the meeting rail lines up, that kind of stuff. Cause this, this is in the outwash plane and it's going to be, <clears throat> it's a very small building, but I think it's really trying to maximize the utility of the second floor for reasons that I can understand as a homeowner, but don't would necessarily appreciate as somebody who, who will be looking at that, cutting a, <clears throat> that silhouette on the um, horizon. So um, what should we do, folks? Well, maybe give him a choice of the revisions and see if he wants to remove the windows. Uh, drop it down six to eight inches that you said and i did like by the way the porch roof on the side yeah thing. yes yeah that yeah. would help it would take care of it that would help yes yeah <laughs> yeah I, I that's great yeah that think works for me so should I make that as a motion? Oh, turn it on. Yes. So, so Diane, make the motion. I made the motion. <laughs> well, I, made the motion. I think we need a little clarity on the motion. So we're dropping the uh, ridge and the eave eight inches. Is that correct? Six to eight inches, I think he said. All right. Right. Uh, and then we're going to add a porch on which side? A porch on the right-hand side where the stairs are coming out of the garage. Huh? Oh. Uh, give me an elevation. I think, it's, I think it'd be lab it's labeled west, although that, I guess it is technically the west elevation. West, yeah. Where the porthole door is? Yes, that's the west. So you're going to put a porch over that and how deep will it be and how wide will it be? I'd run the whole length and have it uh, six feet to the center of the posts. Okay. Does that sound good with everyone? Yeah. All right. So Diane's motion is to drop the ridge six to eight inches and to add a uh, porch roof to the west elevation that runs the whole length and um, is six feet deep. That is... Diane's motion. On Diane's motion, Connie. Aye. Thank you, Jesse. Aye. Very good. Who am I missing? Me. Aye. Right. And there's one other. I person. have a question. 
Oh, that's valid. I know that somebody made a motion, so I'll just say no to the motion. Well, no, I mean, because I'm not loving the motion, but what, what's your comment? I just looked at the application and the trim is white, the sash is black. Oh, no, I thought we were gray. No. And the sides have um, like a barn board. <coughs> Uh-oh. All right. I, I take my motion back. Yeah. Oh. No, this, this needs to be worked up. This needs to be the same color as the house. With, was that trim white as well? No, it was gray. I, 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 yeah, I would say it's gray. Well, it's not what you say. It's what's on the application. Yeah. Well, I guess double check. It's honestly, we submitted this a while ago and I can't remember, but I thought it's, I thought it, it was says gray. white. Painted the white. The house was gray, I believe. Yeah. I think it's, the intent is that it's gray. It says white. Let's go back to the house. It says white on the application though, but the intent is gray. For the house or for the garage? To match. They're both right painted white. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, no. It's black sash. Out in the plains? Yeah. About a modified motion. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. Wait a sec. So we're back. Are we backing up to the house now? We're going to we're we're gonna gonna retro <laughs> open that one. To whatever color, what do you say, gray to match the house and, and the house to match? Uh-huh. And by the way, we've all been just using this sort of generic gray. We should probably be more specific about which gray we're talking. He has Nantucket gray. Okay. All right. So should we modify the motion on the garage to get that out of the way? Yes. Yeah. Right. So the motion, and this is through you, Diane, I suppose we'll keep with you. The motion is um for the ridge to come down eight inches and for there to be a porch along the the western side for the length of the western side six feet deep and to have nantucket gray trim and sash correct right all right yes. all right that's the modified motion so on that mr. modified mr. Motion, chairman may yes. i interject well, can we make sure this is through staff yeah yeah it's through staff thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, on that modified motion, Val. Aye. Thank you. Connie. Aye. Very good, Jesse. Aye. And Diane on your motion. Aye. Very good. And we should reopen the uh, earlier application. So motion from one of those board members to reopen the house. Motion so to reopen the house. Thank you. That was Val's motion on that motion, Diane. Aye. Bonnie. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Thank you. And Val on your motion. Aye. All right. So we're reopened. We're going to change the motion to approve, but with uh, Nantucket gray trim, sash, and doors. Correct? I'll make that motion. All right. Thank you, Val. Uh, on Val's modified motion, Diane. Aye. Very good. Connie. Aye. Jesse. Aye. And Val on your motion. Aye. Thank you all. Now, Ethan, did you learn a lesson from that? I did. Okay, good. Because it really cost us a lot of time because you told us that it was gray. We all believed you and it wasn't gray. I, so. I do apologize. Yeah, the, that was not the intent to deceive. So uh, I'm, I'm certain that it wasn't, but you know, it, it, we just can't afford to lose time like that. Okay, so now let's move along. Thank you. Th thank you, Ethan. Bye bye. Um, all, all right. So now we're at uh, 17 Orange Street, Linda Williams. So, Chairman, we're going to put that over. We are submitting a historic packet, and we I took Holly over there last week, and we came up with a couple of other options. So we're redrawing it, and I'm getting the plans tomorrow. So we, right. we'll submit for next week. I'm up. Good. The other right. issue is that Steve is leaving in eight minutes. Okay. We have been um, impacted by you're not being here, Steve not being here, someone else not being here on 126 Main. I don't think eight minutes is enough time. 
to go Where's over 126 Main? It's down about five, five from here. Well, there's no way we're going to get to it in eight minutes. That's what I'm saying. Are you, is everybody here Thursday? I know you're off for class tomorrow. No, I am not here Thursday. All right, then can we go at the beginning of next week's meeting? Because I know there are people here that have sat here. They're getting an education while they're here. <laughs> can we go to the beginning of the meeting next week if everybody is here? All right, so I should check my schedule. <laughs> Um, I don't know who'll be here. You're here, right? I'll be here. Okay. Ray's here, Val. By the way, that is Valentine's Day, so old, old Lisa is going to be very upset with me. Um, <laughs> but uh, we go to the beginning of next week. We've got to get it over with. It'll be a year right. next week. Okay, so um, I'm okay with that. Okay. Thank you. And uh, as I say, 17 is going over to uh, next Tuesday. I mean, we'd really love to move beyond that. And I know a lot of people are interested in it. Okay, okay. Thank you. Let's do that. All right. So now we're on to old business with uh, the other Ethan at 15 Maury Lane. Hi. Hi. Myself, Diane, Abby, Carrie, all of whom you have. Let's go. Um, you told me to lower the building a couple of feet. I lowered it one foot. Hmm. So now it's 22 feet high, which is like the standard garage, secondary dwelling height. You're pushing it, pushing it. And if you look at the site plan, it's way, it's in the, behind the main house in the back of the corner lot, behind all the trees. Okay. All right. So you, you, you drop the ridge a foot. Yeah. So it's 22 feet, which is a standard secondary right. dwelling. No, we, we know the rules. Thank you. Um, all right. So who wants to start? A, oh, actually, hang on. Holly wants to start. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I will notate that Rob does have comments from SAG as well. Right. Um, for the record, this is a uh, circa 1906 structure um, in Sconset outside the OHD, but obviously in the historic district nonetheless. And there is an HDC survey on file. And the outbuilding on the lot also has an HDC survey file the same date. Um, and I will notate that I wasn't here at the first time this was heard. Uh, I apologize. I was out sick, but I wasn't able to speak. Um, appreciate the reduction in height of one foot down to 22 feet tall to the ridge. Appreciate the proposed style. Um, but I believe it should be reduced in height more to be more compatible with the historic main house. And those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. It's your turn, Robert. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, our little group uh, agrees with Holly about bringing it down even more uh, for it to agree more with the main house. And um, we had the same concerns as before regarding the busyness of the uh, dormers, which you may or may not have addressed last time. And also- the uh, Busyness of what, Robert? Uh, the uh, the uh, dormers. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and also- um, uh, on your agenda today, there's a future item that might be coming up for the same property and wondering if that may not be, should be bundled with the, whatever proposals they have for the main house. And if that's the case, that would be a good idea. And those are our concerns. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Rob. Oh, also, I, yep. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, <clears throat> the, the next two Scottsdale uh, applications we have no concerns with in case I don't make it back to the, this machine. Okay, well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks and for you, attending. And Holly has all the notes that I submitted. If you'd like copies of those, she has them. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, all right, now it's to you, Ethan. I, I guess it's not to you, right? So you've you've basically said that you've dropped the ridge of foot. Uh, you're muted. So um, I'm just going to go to the board on yep. this. Okay, fine. Right? Yep. I mean, you don't have much to say, I guess. No, um, that's the homeowner's living in the upstairs and he's going to have his shop and car below. So. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Who wants to start on this one? Diane, Abby, Carrie. I'll go. 
Thank you. Because I do appreciate that you dropped it a little bit, but I still have a similar issue that it could come down even more. Not the whole building, but that first hipped roof can drop to the top of the floor joist. So it's coming, it would come down another eight inches or more. And I, because I just think that the height of that wall looks very tall above the garage doors, mm -hmm. as well as then the windows above are crammed in this tiny little space. So if you drop that whole thing down, you get bigger windows on that elevation above where the roof is dropping down. Does that make sense? So Carrie, I think it does. What you're suggesting doing is taking that Dutch hip, Eve, and dropping it down. Yes, all around. So you're not necessarily concerned about the ridge height. You're more interested in dropping the lower roof so that there's less wall face. Yeah, and he'd get better size windows. I, I gotcha. Okay. I, I don't disagree with H <clears throat> or the SAG because Sponsor. the windows on yeah. those dormers could be spread out and a little better arranged as well. That's mm. all. Okay. Carrie, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Diane, you ready? Yeah. Uh, if you want to bring it down, I'm not so technically educated this time. What With the roof on the south side, what if you brought it down closer to the windows on the first floor, there's a lot of space between the windows and and the little hip roof. So it would, if we could drop it down a foot or a foot and a half, dropping that down. I don't know that you need that much height in a garage. It's not, it's not doing a 40 foot boat in there. So I, that's what I would suggest is to bring that whole thing down to closer to the windows of the first floor, if you can do that. Okay. Thank you. Abby? Abby says, well, so first of all, what, what are the um, garage doors? Are those, are those white or are those natural to weather? Um, <clears throat> yeah, they're probably going to be uh, probably white matching the house and the other garage in the back that's already on the property to match. Uh, actually, no, sorry, the colors are different. Um, give me one second. The colors are, let me get the application, which I don't have. Second, yeah, I don't have it for me, but because it's been here for so long. Give me one um, let me go on to my other comment was, yeah. uh, I'm, so I, I wish we had the main house with this application so we could look at the details, mm -hmm. but um, I think there I is a Dutch dormer or Dutch hip on the main house. And I think <clears throat> instead of doing these shed dormers that don't really relate, maybe you just do a simple uh, little hip instead of a, you know, this thing that is. The main alien. house is in this application at the bottom. The what? The He's main house is in this roll application. through your the thing, the main house stuff. Is yeah, something. I'd like to see the other two elevations. I don't have that picture on mine, but All right. um, so anyway, um, if you get my drift on the type of dormer instead of these little wing sheds. Um, and if that was a more typical, simpler um, garage door, I think white would be appropriate. Um, it's got a little, a lot going on. Um, if it were a little simpler, I think it would be fine in white. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Abby. Um, I'm going to paraphrase, hopefully paraphrase what Carrie was after in her statement. And I think that it could be accomplished by increasing the roof pitch. And I'm sure that you're taking your 10 and 12, if I read that correctly, off of the house. But if it were an 11 and 12, 
you wouldn't lose that much floor space on the second floor. And then keeping the ridge at the same height, you would be dropping the eave. And that, I believe, I don't want to speak for the board, but it seems to me that that is the concern of the board is the fact that when we look at the north elevation with the garage doors, we're seeing a tremendous amount of space between the top of the doors and the eave. And that could be mollified by increasing the roof pitch, losing ever so little space on the second floor and dropping the eave all the way around. Just a thought. Can I add something else? Yeah, go ahead. Well, so this, the, the main house, as I remember it, um, it is very, very simple. And above the, the garage doors is a huge fascia strip that would probably be painted white. And I'm wondering if that shouldn't be reduced or see how it almost looks like a foot. Uh, yeah, I do. And yes, I think that's, that's going to be glaring. That is, uh, that's true, right, Ethan? It looks like you have like a, a freeze board running under the eave that's probably a foot deep. It's and, 10 and, inches. And 10 equally, inches. I think oh, the dormers good. have extra, if those were simpler trimmed out, especially from the street, the, the, the main house is so quiet suddenly this is sort of sort of perky and sort of preppy. I think it just has to be right. simplified. It sounds like we might need to go hit this again, Ethan. Sorry. I'll make a motion to hold for revisions. All right. Um, okay, on, thanks. Yeah, on Abby's motion, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Abby, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, next up we have uh, 13 Commercial Wharf. Anybody to rep that? Bill McGuire's here. Okay, William. Only my mom called me that, and only when I did something bad. So, Ray, you know that Stephen left. The um, sort of assumed that. Too, so. Yeah. He said seven. Okay, so now what that means for you, Bill. <laughs> we'll go casual um is you don't have steven but you do have myself uh diane abby val and you also have jesse as an alternate jesse, all three, all three. yeah i'm just choosing jesse because he was the first one on the on the menu and i just i just moved so. all right so you good with that? Yes. Yes, that's, that's All right. perfect. So let's go. Just oh, wait. yeah. Right. OK, so the, the elevation sheets are arranged so that the existing drawings are at the top. The middle drawings are the previously approved plan when we had a much larger structure uh, until, we, until we went to CONCOM and they said we can't expand any closer to the street. And in the bottom row is the uh, re revisions for the current application that we had gone over at the last meeting. And so uh, drop, the, um, drop the roof lines on the west side so that they're lower than the, the main on, on the north and also narrowed the, nor the, the gable on the north side uh, and then added the porch all the way across, um, which I believe was Ray's suggestion. And, and as you can see that the, <clears throat> uh, the previously approved plans are uh, mirror very much what the application is with, uh, it, with it just being a much shorter building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for the record, this structure was originally uh, built in 2008, so it's non-contributing within the OHD. Um, at the November 22nd meeting, the commission asked for simplification in the proposal. I believe that, that this is what's been provided. 
um, and more legible to, to differentiate um, between existing, um, previously approved and uh, proposed. Appreciate the changes on the east. I don't believe the revised north is successful with the shed porch. The small pent roof over the front door was more successful. Uh, there is something off on the south, maybe the rendering, but there's no differenti differentiation to the ridge line um, to show some sort of additive massing, if at all possible. Understanding that this structure is elevated to meet flood, but at the same time should be able to at least show that additive massing. So those are my comments, and I note that HSAG had comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. And Mickey, oh, there you are. Um, go ahead. Thanks. Okay, so the front facade, uh, if you look at the lower left corner, you'll see the front facade. Should It should have an independent gable that is not flush with the side addition. The second floor and the side addition should step back several feet to help define the front gable. You can see that the front facade, as it's shown there now, is all one plane. Um, the front porch roof should not extend over the steps and over the empty space beyond. This creates a very unusually tall post running into the ground. The porch roof can simply cover the door and the adjacent window. The porch is only three feet wide and feels awkwardly narrow. It should be a foot or so wider and the plate height should drop a little bit. It's, a, it's well over the door head. Uh, on the west elevation, uh, which you don't see, is this, can you scroll down? Yeah, there you go. Okay, the west elevation is um, on the right. On the right, thanks. Okay, on the west elevation, the second gable to the right should remain at its existing height to allow it to be a secondary to the newer gable on the left. This would keep the south elevation more or less is existing, creating better or more appropriate additive massing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mickey. Um, who would like to begin? I'll try. Thanks, Al. <laughs> I, yeah. I have been looking at this today to try and figure it out. Um, I agree with a lot of what Mickey has said, uh, especially on the front to have a little bit more differentiation of that main gable. Um, and my other concern was on the east, the rebate on that side, it looks like it's about a foot between the gable and then the other mass, which goes forward toward the street. All in all, I, I this, <clears throat> it's, it's, I think getting there, mm. my other concern is that all of the roofs tie in at exactly the same height. Mm. And that's, that is a little concerning, but um, thank you for the changes and all of the information. That's great. Okay, Val, thank you. Uh, let's see, Jesse, are you ready? Um, I am sort of, sorry. I can come back to you. Let's see, Abby. Yeah, I've just got a few things. Um, I like this idea of um, the stepping back and showing the different massings. So um, what, what um, Mickey was referring to, I think that's on the north elevation. Correct. is instead of making everything flat, step it back. Yep. And I think the same, anywhere you can do that, I think is helpful. And I think that the west elevation is better with just two windows in that left-hand mass um, instead of adding the middle one. So, yeah, I like the simplified, I like the stepping back massing and anything you can do to change the boxiness, roof lines, you know, one higher than the other by a couple of feet, anything you can do to make this um, less boxy. Thank you. All right, Abby, thank you. Diane, you ready? Oh, you're muted, Diane. There we go. I agree with 
that I would like to see it uh, less boxy. I would like to see the from on the on the drawing I've got. It says it says it's it shows a site plan, I guess, and the one on the right has a greater distance with the projecting uh, thing on the left, and I would like the right whole right hand one, and the, and that's got a it's more definitive of the separation, and I would go along with that. And the building looks to be a little narrower, which I think is good. I don't mind. I didn't think I would like it, but seeing here the proposed west elevation with the two uh, gables, I I don't mind it. And the windows. What what is the? I guess it's thing in the middle of the roof that's not a that's not a skylight or anything no that's right? just a that's a note okay it it's just, just very it, small. it looks like a skylight but those are notes yeah okay so i think it's i think it would be i think it would fit in all right there and and i don't mind the proposed ones so okay there you are. um thank you diane jesse are you ready uh yes thank you um um i mean outside of maybe changing some of the uh, roof heights uh, i think the proposed uh um drawings are good are you gonna are is, is it viewable from the back from the balcony and the porch from the south elevation yes right on the water all the way yeah. yeah i prefer i mean i would prefer to go back to a single door on that second floor. But other than that, I think um, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jesse. Uh, I actually agree with all of Mickey's, Mickey's comments, his group's comments, um, including the uh, porch over the front door being too wide and uh, the flatness of the front. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I think that Mickey covered it. Um, those are my comments. Would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, before you make that motion, I wasn't going to jump in here. It's Linda Williams for the record, a uh, member of the CONCOM at this point. Yes. We spent quite a great deal of time in several meetings on this project. Uh -huh. They are confined to that footprint. Oh, we're, we're aware. And that location, yeah. period. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, we're totally aware of that. Okay, because so, it's all inside you know, the I mean, 50. It's, it's, it, it's not uncommon for the CONCOM to impose restrictions and then somebody to like maximize, you know, the utility of the footprint that's left over to them. But it's our board, the HDC's responsibility to make sure <laughs> that it's done responsibly. We didn't so, allow any expansion inside the 50. So just keep that in mind. They're stuck. No, no. It, th that's why Bill's bigger, here, actually, bigger than the second because floor. of that whole thing. All right. So can I have a motion? Come on. It is. <laughs> Are we holding for a hold, motion to hold for revisions? Yeah, I think that's safe. All right. Um, thank you, Abby. <laughs> on that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Uh, Abby, on your motion. Yeah, and I'd really like to see some progress on this because it looks like we've been at this for a while. We have been. Thank you. We have been. All right, so that let's note that for the record, okay? All right, thank you, Bill. 
Um, all right, now we're now we are to Linda Williams at fifty one Walsh. Um, myself, no Stephen, Diane, Abby, Val. This is this is deja vu here. Um, so, is that? Oh, I see. Dutra and Thornwell recused none. Okay, so Carrie, can you sit on this one? Yeah. All right, very good. Let's go, Linda. Uh, we've seen this before. We yeah. took your comments into consideration and didn't like it from the view from the east, though you can't see it because you have to be standing in the backyard of the guy next door, but we did that. We simplified the whole thing. We're going to expand the deck um, to the right. You can see the yellow highlight up there. We're going to expand the deck to the right one section and run the steps straight up. Now you have um, in your packets, you should have like 100 pictures. Uh, one of which is from the one that you approved at 12 Brant Point, which is what we're going to emulate. These are the pictures of the existing structure. Okay. We're going to expand it one section to the right and run it straight up. Um, and it's that's the view from James Street. That's the view from James Street. We took them in the summer, and then Val pointed out that you need to take them in the winter, so I did. Okay. And if they're natural to weather, you can't see them. A lot of these structures, unfortunately, in the interior of Grant Point are cathedral ceilinged with everything on the first floor. There, there's that one right there. Stay there. That's the one that's at the back of 12 Brant Point. It goes straight up from an expanded deck right underneath the roof walk and natural to weather. And they're going to be almost impossible to actually pick off from either James Street. You certainly can't see it from Walsh. And uh, Hulbert Avenue is the one right behind it. And there are pictures, I think, below this one that shows the view from Hulbert or on um, top of this one. I can't remember which. And um, natural to weather. And they're not really visible from anywhere else, but uh, minimally from Hulbert. And in the summer, not visible at all because there's a tree there. <laughs> and if I move them over like we are to the right, instead of coming around from the existing deck, curling around that corner and then up, they become far less visible. So we're going to emulate exactly what's been done at 12. Okay. And there are some other pictures in there of white ones up on Moore's Lane. Um, All right. Well, let's, let's see how it it. They're white and you can't miss them. You can see them right from the street. And those pictures are in there as well, as well as uh, one or two others. All right. Thanks. Um, let's see. It goes to Holly now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so again, for the record, this is a uh, circa 1930 structure has been altered. It's called Sandpiper. Um, there is an HDC survey on file. Um, and I believe based on what I can tell from the original survey um, to what the structure is now, it was changed to two stories probably after the 90s or so. Uh, appreciate the photos of others within the area, as always. Um, the revisions however, are really hard to discern the proposed details. I was scrutinizing as much as I could. Um, I do think the view from Hulbert Avenue is telling um, from the winter that both the, um, obviously roof, roof walk at the end of the day, but the stairs, which is important, um, will be seen, um, but will be uh, screened in the summer. The roof lock is appropriate, but historically would be near the chimney. This is not. It's more on the center away from the chimney. So I think that's something to look at. Uh, the stairway access based on the rendering, if you can go as if you go to the um, one that actually shows it head on, if you go, those are the old ones. You scroll back up. Um, it's rather long compared to the examples shown. Appreciate the examples, though. Um, it's not clear on how it will be configured. Is there going to be a landing? E no, straight up. Yeah. OK. Um, Identical to the one at 12 Brand Point. No. Well, and, 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 and it can't be. That one is. Uh -uh. And, and that was kind of where my comment, if you if you look at this elevation, compare it to the one at 12, that has a, um, a, a lower roof pitch. Um, so there's a break where it goes. It, it goes up and then it goes right. over. Whereas this one's a steeper um, as, a, as a, a second. So I'm, I'm just concerned on that um, aspect of it. Um, those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. And Mickey, do you have anything on this? 
Yeah, we do. Um, I'm going to object again. This is nowhere right. near the old Thank historic you. district, so I'm on record. Okay. That no, within, this, this is within our um, <laughs> no, it's not zone. We, yeah, we're, we don't align with with the OHD. We we include Brant Point, but well, you don't um, exist. So hey, hey, I'm, I'm recognizing Mickey right now. Okay, hang on. And you're going to get an attorney. Our, our comments are such, um, as far as we can tell, the proposal is to shingle the sidewalls of this railing. Is that correct? If you require it, otherwise, I think he's looking through it to the gable to the left of it from the west side. I think this are, these were done by Rob uh, Newman, and I don't believe it's going to be shingled rail on the right, but it doesn't matter. We can shingle it. No, I mean, look, there's a side view of the stairwell. Could you try to find that elevation? It's going to be the next one down. More than likely, yes. right there. There it is. Zoom in on that. Yeah, I think it's just looking through the stairway at the side of the other building. Well, it, the other it gable. It projects up above the ridge line, so I think their proposal is to shingle the sidewall of this hand of the railing. I talked to Doug, and he doesn't care if shingle it or not. It's up well, to either way, I mean, this this is clearly visible from Holbert. You've even said that it's minimally visible. Shingling it doesn't make it disappear. Mm. Um, this will set a very bad precedent. It's just, it's just not something that the board wants to have as an approval on. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wasn't quite understanding that drawing myself. So uh, now it makes more sense. Um, thank you. And let's see, we're going to turn it over to the board now. Mr. Chair, um, the, the drawings, it's Lynn, it's really hard to read these drawings. I mean, it looks like they've been erased, but not really Redrawn. sort of penciled in. So it's really hard to see what your intention is here. Um, I think he used the existing elevations that were in the file rather than redraw the entire building for yeah, one aspect. They're not even drawn. It's just it, it's sort of cut and paste. Kind well, of. that wasn't me. That was Rob. Yeah. So I, I just have a hard time commenting on this, Mr. Chair. So I'm going to let somebody else. All right, uh, Abby, thank you. Um, Val, you wanna give it a try? Well, I feel the same way. I'm, we're voting on something that we really don't have an idea about what it's gonna look like. Okay. In reality. You're going up a full height second story wall with a ladder, and then you're going up a really long steep roof pitch. That is a way longer ladder and stair than any of the examples we've seen, as far as I can tell. It's not, but I'll, we'll have to fix the drawing so you can see that. All right. Are there um, shingles going up there? That's totally bizarre on a roof, going straight up to a roof walk that is a traditional that's what I'm Ballister saying. I think it's looking walk. through the railing at the other side. Are well, they but so are they balusters going all the way up there and they have to be three feet tall? The pictures are ones that were rigged up by somebody that aren't built to code. This one is a couple feet away from um, the gable mass on the north elevation where it should be tucked right up next to it. Um, there's just all sorts of details that are not shown and then could be a lot more subtle, but it's just the fact that this is on a full height wall up there. And a lot of the other ones are on knee wall, you know, like a four foot plate and then the roof. So it's just very hard to grasp doing this. I feel like there's gotta be a solution inside. Do a beautiful ship's ladder. There's gotta be some space in that huge roof walk area down below to shoot up through the inside. There isn't. Otherwise, we would have done Okay, it. hang on. Well, I think so, there's always okay, a way to do something. Hang, Sorry, hang on. Linda? So, Carrie, I got gotcha. You're looking for an interior solution. Yeah. Um, good points. Now, I, that, oh. yes, but but I did Val, did you finish? Uh, yeah, I just, I'm not going to, I feel the same way as Abby. I, I can't comment on it because I don't really know what I'm commenting. Because the drawings are... are right, well, and can we just hold it and waste, stop wasting time with you and, guys? You've got a long agenda. Can we hold it for better for drawings? Me. So, Diane, I'm sure that you have comments, but let's just hold this and get some drawings that actually, like, we we'll can... have to redraw the whole house. Well, how about a no, second floor plan to see we can't if erase it can work it all. inside? 
He has to redraw the whole thing. Otherwise, I, we can't get those shingles. Oh, listen, How do there's I many, not many different it, ways to do this. Uh, you get those shingles. Arguing back and forth with All right. The I want a motion. Well, tell me how to redraw it and I'll do it. I want a motion. A motion to hold for re revisions. Okay. There you go. A motion to hold for revisions that hopefully will include some more um, legible drawings. Okay. So yeah, it's hard on to see. Abby's motion, Val. Val. Aye. It's hard to see. Diane. Shut up. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Kerry. Aye. Very good. Abby on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Let's see. Now we're going to go. Oh, 126 main you're holding, right, Linda? Yeah. Okay. So that's. And, 126 main is held. All right. So that's held till next Tuesday. Okay. So now we're on to new business of January 24th. How are we all doing? We're, we're at um, uh, Town of Nantucket, 16 Broad Street. And let's see. I'm gonna step away from these and let somebody- oh, Yeah, okay. So I'm trying to figure out like who's where. So Steven is gone at this point. So he's off. Val, Val you're- disappearing for a moment. Yep. So, so Abby's in, Diane, and we just heard from Carrie. So let's go to Connie and Jesse on this on these next three applications for the town. Okay. And four good buddy. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um Steven or Steven's proxy. Okay. Uh, good good evening, Alex Yonich for SMRT from Portland, Maine. Um, we are um, we were engaged by the town uh, to evaluate and propose repairs and replacements for the windows uh, on three buildings um, as one project for us. You're reviewing them tonight as three different things: the town hall, the current sheriff's office, and then the little clinic building behind that. Um, and sort of all were in different stages of um, disrepair in terms of the windows specifically. So that was our mandate, windows, general trim, um, siding, um, any kind of other uh, items that are perhaps not relevant anymore and could be taken off the building, patched, mortar repairs and so forth. So um, what we are proposing is taking out the existing windows and replacing them in kind um, um, the windows would be Green Mountain um, windows. Um, historically, I think accurate. We're basically replacing uh, with the same shape um, of brick molding at the window openings. Um, six over six, I think, is generally the, uh, uh, the the existing layout. We're doing the same. Um, the doors are now being replaced. They're in good condition. Uh, a lot of the eave um, trim um, is in need of some repair, either painting or just replacing with the same profile. So we're doing that. And there's a little bit of work on the, on the uh, collaborate siding up on the, the cupola, which we're proposing basically to just replace in kind with the same profile and um, exposure. Um, and there are a handful of old pipes and conduits and so forth there on the building that don't serve any function anymore. And, we would take those off and patch the holes. So all in all, it's um, um, the intervention is fairly significant, but it is appearance wise going to look the same as it was before. Okay, so Alex, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. everything that you've described seems to me to be a like kind replacement. Is that an accurate statement? That is. It is. Um, I believe that the windows that are in place there right now are single glaze, for example. Are you proposing single glaze Green Mountain? So we had initially proposed single glaze Brasco windows, and Holly can attest to the fact that we ran this by her as an option. Okay. The town has since come back to us and requested that we propose simulated divide light windows from Green Mountain with um, internal uh, dividers. Um, 
they are concerned that uh, the town buildings are not as energy efficient as they could be, and they're not particularly uh, comfortable to work in. Okay. Um, so that was a request. If you recall, this uh, the project was on the docket for a long time. We pulled it, and now we're back with a new type of window. Okay. Um, just wanted to be clear on that particular. Oh, that's a fair question. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for the record, the town building is a circa 1964 colonial revival. Um, it is contributing towards our local di and national district. The alterations proposed are window replacement, like kind to the cupola, trim, cornices, doors, gutters. Um, yes, the the proposal for the Green Mountain windows are SDL um, instead of TDL um, as a request um, with town staff um, and our energy department. Uh, appreciate the uh, Nantucket profile um, and everything else being like kind, replace, repair. And as you'll notice in the application, you'll see the original 1960s plans that were provided in the file. Um, the, and I, I do, do want to mention for the record that um, you will not find right now um, your typical re requirement of a window survey. I have brought that up to the agent um, as a requirement for all replacements within the OHD. But overall, appreciate the sensitive like kind repairs to this contributing structure that the town owns. Um, and of course, it would be nice to have a window survey if the commission's so inclined. Thank you. All right, Holly. And Mickey, you have something to say on this? Yeah. So, you know, the they are proposing SDLs, and mm -hmm. it seems that in the OHD that we should be, you know, suggesting they use TDLs instead of SDLs. Um, the if there's any changes or repair work to the to the brick and mortar, we want to make sure the mortar color is matched um, to the existing, not necessarily just use Portland cement. And then there's a on the front on the Federal Street, and I believe maybe even the South Water Street elevations there replacing some light fixtures. I think they're sort of surface mounted underneath an overhang. Um, and they have very um, <clears throat> sort of cheap looking plastic lenses, the ones that they have spec'd. And it seems like an opportunity to, to actually provide a more historic looking light fixture hmm. than what's there now. And that's it. Okay, Mickey, thank you. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. I did establish a board on this, right? Yeah. Okay. So who would like to begin? Do you want me to reiterate? Yeah. So, oh, Mr. Chair. I'll yeah. begin. Now, go ahead, Diane. Oh, all right. Hey, hang on. I just want to make sure as, uh, Maybe I didn't establish a board, and if if not, I apologize. But Abby, you're on. Val yeah. is Val Val's off. off. Val's off, right? I'm Diane sorry, is in. Oh. That, that left. Where was I in the rotation? Do Do you need Val? It was me. Oh, I believe. Yeah. I, believe I, be, I believe it was me and Connie. Okay, let's go with. I think you're right, Jesse. It was you and Connie. Um, Val, let's you can stay off of these next three for the town of Nantucket, all right? Okay, not hearing from Val, but uh, no, you're so, good. all right. Um, so who wanted to start? Oh, I said I would, but I don't care. Uh, go ahead, Diane, you can go. The others are mine. Okay, I, I agree with what Mick said. The windows should be TDL. This is our main building for our whole island and to use SDLs because you can't tell or whatever is silly. And the and the the light over the door with the plastic things, it should be a historic shaped and, and made light not one with plastic sides on it so that that's what i think okay thank you diane um okay yes i got gotcha. you thank you um abby 
Yeah, I mean, is it possible to make a TDL that's that's double glazed? Because somebody could make a killing. No. If they did. Yeah, no, there's well, hang on a second. Uh you can make a true divided light that is double glazed. And the muntins, as any of those of us who were practicing back in the early 80s knows, um, the muntins are about an inch and a half thick. Ooh. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's like the ugliest window. In fact, that that original concept of the of the um, um, insulated glass window, that is why oh we have the prohibition on those because that's what those double glazed. Mickey, you remember those things, right? The, the muttons had to be like an inch and a half thick so that the window wouldn't fall apart. Anyway. So, All right. So it doesn't exist. Uh, I, I'll go with the t true, true divided lights for the, the office building. Okay. Um, what? Let's see. Connie. You could say um, something. I, I do understand about the SDLs and energy conservation. I, I don't know if there's a solution there to stick with the SDLs because of the energy. Um, my concern is the, the ceiling light um, at the entrances. I would hope that they could find something more historic instead of what they're considering a proposed plastic. Um, but that's really all I have to say. Okay, Connie, thank you. Jesse. I'm sorry, Holly, you probably said this. What, what's the date of the building? 50. You know, 1964, it replaced the Frederick C. Sanford, which was a gorgeous Greek revival. Unfortunately, the town tore that down and built this. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's not that old. It's no. contributing, though. It's, it's, yeah, definitely contributing. Um, and so um, my next question, which kind of so can we do a, storm or interior something that's going to interior storm exterior storm something that's going to give it the energy efficiency that we need and still get the uh, true divided look certainly from it'll be out of turn but brook mirberg is the rep for green mountain and we and this could be old news but they have this really kind of attractive historic looking exterior storm or at least they did two years ago that did meet the energy code and so for few like Brooklyn, we went to ask because they were single pane green mountain and they had like an historic looking storm that wasn't like a triple track metal thing. It was like wood and it came with the window. So it might, I don't know, it would be worth asking Brooke because he reps, that's who you would buy green mountain from out here. Thank you. I mean, I think, you know, energy efficiency is extremely important, especially in such a large building like this, that's a town building. And also that it is not, it's not, it's built in the sixties. Um, so I think that we need to modernize it, but make it as historical looking as, as we possibly can. I'm not saying go with, um, um, with the windows that they're requesting, but I think we need to um, make this energy efficient as well. Hence, maybe the exterior storm. Can't we put plastic on the inside <laughs> clear plastic and it's and it goes in and you don't even notice it but the the it seals the window off but not on the outside i do know they made them because i was going to use them myself yeah those those things as again as mickey is aware would rot the window because the the moisture would condense between the panel on the inside and the exterior and it would drip down and it would rot the window in a couple of years so thank you, Diane. Um, but my comments are as follows. It's I gave this little lecture about uh, a year ago. I was in Edgar Town and I was walking around the side streets and remarking at how absolutely gorgeous, wonderful the buildings looked. And I realized that the reason that they all looked so fabulous was that none of them had any storm windows on them. They all just had the window windows. And then when I took five steps into the private property, I noticed that all of the windows were insulated glass windows, all of them. And so 
at a certain point, and I know this is like blasphemy coming from the chair of the HDC, but at a certain point, you know, I, I think that we have to um, accept that technology has advanced. We've approved insulated glass windows in the second floor of the Nobby shop. They're all in there now. We've approved windows on the second floor of um, a house right on Union Street, uh, just as you round the bend going into town. Um, so it's something that um, back when they first came out with. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. See you welcome. in the morning. You're welcome. Um, so back when insulated glass windows first came out, they were horrible because of the size of the muttons. Since then, technology has improved, the glass has improved, everything has improved to the point where it is very, very difficult to distinguish a sink, an insulated glass window from a true divided light. So given my choice, I would rather see a window without a storm window on it than a window uh, uh, with a storm that was single glazed, unless it's a it's a, a building that had an old building that has old windows in it, which this I think in the '60s is not really truly the case. But I I know I'm sort of very much in the minority on that one. So I would like a motion on this application if somebody could give it to me. Um, I have a question as a person uh, in town, and I'm not sitting on this. Yeah, go ahead. I think they're proposing the mullions between the glass. That's the most egregious kind of SDL. No, 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 no. They're proposing you need to have a spacer bar in between the two layers of glass so that you can't see uh, light between them. That is common practice with these. So if you actually look at the profile of the window, it's going to look very similar to that of a regular old you know, I would just say this is a game changer for everything that yeah, we do yeah. every week, and we should discuss right. it as a board. Yeah, I totally agree. Mr. Chair, if I could just offer up, um, we did work very closely with Brooke Mirbringen about what opportunities and what options we do have from Green Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, the man is incredibly knowledgeable about windows. So um, to achieve the town's energy objectives um, and to marry those with uh, the commission's historical objectives. Uh, we felt this was the best we could do in terms of the button width um, and insulated glazing with the, the, the spacer bar. Um, the staff also expressed interest in being able to operate the window to, to let natural ventilation in uh, when the weather gets better rather than having to remove these big bulky um, panels every single time. I know they put in air conditioners in there as well. Uh, so all of this was in response to that. It wasn't sort of done in a vacuum. Um, we were, again, trying to balance all these requirements. I, I will note that the, the sheriff's office next door to this has SDLs that were installed recently uh, with uh, spacer bars. And I don't know if anybody walks by that or notices that as they walk by the building. But it is right next <laughs> to the brick building. That you have to be careful when you use the word or the term spacer bar because people think that that means that it's the mutton is on the inside in between the glass, with the exclusion of there mut being muttons on the outside of the glass, which is not the case. Correct. Yes, uh, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Yeah. Uh, for clarification, um, yeah. did 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 Alex just say? There's one we can go view and decide on. There's this? one at the sheriff's office, but I was okay. going to suggest getting a sample put on this on this building. Yeah, that that was the other thing I was thinking. Could we get one window, install it, maybe on the inside, and just take a look at it? And maybe this is a. I mean, this is so. This is a building from the '60s. It's a town building. It's a. It's a, It's. A, it sounds like a place where we should try this. So. Um, I don't know if we if we would. Well, why don't we, we make a motion that that would. So okay. Okay. wait, Jesse's got. Something. Sorry, one more thing, just to try to appease um, all parties here. How hard is it to get a window survey? How hard is it to what, Jesse? Uh, for to get a window survey, is that just photographing the windows, basically? Yeah. If I may, Mr. Chair, if I may on that. Um. 
there is somebody who does that that's willing to do it for the town for nil um and that's miss linda williams um so she could do that on behalf of the town to satisfy that requirement so i think that's something we could do um and then you know also hold it for for an example whether uh, um the the architects want to provide one that's in town that we can look at or install one on the on the town building, which I think is a lot of, that's a lot of extra effort. But if, if the uh, sheriff's department um, is a good example, which my next question is, is the, do we know if the sheriff's example uh, is the same window type as meaning manufacture as the one that's being proposed? It is not, I will clarify that the, the window at the sheriff's department, I believe is a vinyl window, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, uh, we're, well, what we're proposing we is, that. What we were proposing a wood window with um, the interim, I guess I'll say interim bars between the glazing, um, in addition to the wood muntins on the outboard side of the glass. Um, Would so it, I, got it. I, Would it satisfy the board if we just had a window brought to the office that we can look at instead of having it installed? No, well, can I, we've Go been down this road a number yeah. of times already. The, the visibility of whether you can detect the fact that it's a simulated divided light or not really needs to be done on site in place, you know, with the sun and the context and all that, you know, look, I, I don't think that it's a, um, a difficult thing to pull one of those windows out and put another one in to, to give it a try. Yeah. I'd okay. Like so I mean, we're talking about like what? 50 windows or more it's a lot okay i i like to make a motion to hold to have show example of um manufacturer's window in place uh at the town building um and as well as a window survey okay jesse i like that motion thanks so much so on jesse's motion connie hi thank you diane Abby, how about you? Aye. Very good. Diane? Okay, Jesse, on your motion? Aye. Yes. I get okay, and there's Diane. Thank you. And um, I'm in favor. Thank you very much. And we'll move along to, well, let me just ask you, let me cut to the chase on this. The next two, 20 South Water Street, are we looking at some, a sort of a similar thing? Mm -hmm. 20 Water Street, the sheriff's office is a much different animal. We are um, merely going to do some general repairs on the building, trim, patching some holes, removing some old oh, okay. and so All forth. Right. Okay. Um, there so this is, is one the building window. that has this is the building that has the vinyl windows in it. Correct. Interesting. Okay. There is one missing sash in the back side where the I guess the jail cell backs up to that they've removed and have a piece of plywood over it. And we would propose to obviously take that piece of plywood and replace it with a matching sash. Okay. But that same, is to the extent of the board, windows. Same board. Yeah. To the extent of the windows. I mean, there are no other windows that we're doing there. So the vinyl windows will stay. Uh, they are in reasonably good condition. Uh, we were instructed not to remove them unless we felt that they okay. were somehow just, failing. Just curious. All yeah. right. Thank you. Um, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for the record, this is the circa 1929 uh, originally as uh, the fire station and then um, police station. Um, and I, there's actual a, a photo that um, I found at NHA's um, from the 1944 where it shows the cupola um, of the fire station uh, the COA shows cedar shingles, um, but this is brick, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, that would need to be re reflected on the application. Uh, the, the cupola is to um, be put back as a previously approved. Um, it should be an exact replica to the 1929 um, police station. Uh, let's see. And the plans that you have in the packet originally are from when the conversion of the station went from the fire station to the police station back in the 80s. 
Um, basically, I have no concerns as long as that cupola that's being put back um, is as the existing plans as well as, and it matches that 1944 um, file photo. Um, and again, no concerns. Thank you. All right, Holly, thank you. Mickey. Yeah, um, no, we have, we don't really have any concerns. We have more of a request in the form of the, um, some historic photos show that the garage door that's on the building now, it's its not really what you're showing in the drawing. It's more of a paneled um, overhead garage door. The photographs should actually show what's there now. Um, so our request would be, considering the overall scope of the, the town's projects on these three buildings, is to go back to the historic photos and you'll see um, a carriage house style multi-pane swinging garage doors that were on the front of this building. And they're, you know, they're attractive doors unlike what's there now. So it just, it's a request that maybe they could consider going back to that original door. It would be very appropriate. Thanks. Thank you, Mickey. Um, how would you feel about an overhead door that was made to look like that door? It's, it's, I mean, I don't know what their program is, I, you know. I'm right, just... so that would be, more acceptable than what's there now. Right. So yeah, okay. pro probably a good idea. All right. Um, all right. Board members, same board. I'll go. Thank you. Um, I, I, I would like to see the original door put back and not an overhead, but a real good looking door to replicate what was there originally. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Diane, yeah, thanks, Diane. Go ahead. Which, which I had somebody come in the house and had to get them out of the house. So I miss it. What, what building has the, has the plastic vinyl window? This there? one. This building. And, and they're not proposing okay. changing I, them. Yeah. They're proposing keeping them. I think that's ridiculous. Why do we bother to do this week after week, day after day? And our th three main buildings of the of the town of Nantucket, we can't take the time to make the windows that go with the age of what we are proposing when people come off and look for the historic Nantucket which is, oh, well, a few vinyl windows, that doesn't matter. And some other ones, the cost of doing this is, is not a problem. They spend money that goes to doing stuff that isn't as important. These are three <clears throat> of our main buildings. And I think it, they should be TDLs with some way of insulating them, they somebody's got to be bright enough. The Green Mountain certainly comes up with ideas and get rid of the vinyl ones and make the front, make the fire, the door, the garage, the way it's supposed to be, and have some pride in the buildings that are are downtown. So there. Okay. Um. Let's we do see. have photos in the in the if somebody wants to look at while we talk. If we scroll up, they're in yeah. the packet. I'm I'm curious to see how many complaints we've gotten on the vinyl windows because I've lived here for 30 years and have never noticed that they're vinyl windows. Um, so let's see, Jesse. I, I, I want to understand the scope of work a little bit more. Um, so are we, are we replacing windows on this building? No, no, no. Okay. That is not what they're requesting. A one window stack. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mr. Right. Chair. There's a building there it is right there in the middle. Per, per, their, per their application, which is in the, you know, the, the letter, light kind, trim cornices, gutters, brick and mortar, a window sash, window screens, yeah. Cedar shingles at the dormers, clean the existing brick and remove unused wall mounted items. Um, and then also the cupola. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I, 
Diane, I'm all, I, I totally understand that these windows shouldn't be here in the first place, but they're already there, unfortunately. Um, so, and, what, and they're not applying for windows. Um, so I, I don't know how we could uh, enforce that, but um, based on what they're applying for, um, I think uh, um, th that's all good, but it would be great if you could uh, um, do a little um, history and, and get um, as close to you as you can to that front garage door uh, to the original. That would be really awesome. And I think our town deserves that. And I think that was a great uh, idea from Mickey. Um, I understand that the, you know, there's functionality involved too, but um, you know, whatever you could do would be great. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Connie. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I guess on, I guess there's two, two proposals on building one. I have no concerns as long as the cupola is replicated. And then on the, the garage door, I would hope to see that would be returned to the historic. That's it. Very good. So, um, Alex, I think we could give you an approval on this if you were okay with changing the current garage door to the one that was there historically. Do you want to take an approval with that condition or would you rather us hold this for revisions? Um, Mr. Chair, I don't know that I have the authority to, to make that I agreement on behalf of the town. Um, I, gotcha. I would prefer to hold and then go back and ask. Okay. Already. Okay, Abby, did you just make a motion? Yes, I, I, I was going to give him the authority to, to, to make that call. Oh, you're going to go, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> he appreciates but, uh, that Abby very much. Okay. As a town <laughs> official, okay. Abby is giving you the go ahead. <laughs> Let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's approve this application as is. And um, with the proviso that uh, you go back to your um, whatever, who tells you what to do. And um, if he says yes, then you've okay. got the, the go ahead. Uh, all right. I, I like that, actually. That, that's a good motion. That's a good will motion. Um, okay. So Abby has, ha Abby has made a motion to approve this as submitted with a stipulation that Alex will go back to the town and request uh, that they uh, restore the garage door to the one that was originally there uh, out of interest, out of deference to the HDC. Um, that one is more Abby's thing. motion. What, what, what's that? Can we add one more thing to that motion? That, uh, sure. So to make it more easier for the uh, applicant to get is that they don't have to come back. They could just do that through staff. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, that would certainly be through staff. Yes. Okay. If, if, yes they're gonna, through if they're going to put the good doors in there, definitely through staff. Um, so Mr. yes, Chair. thank you for that. No, so on that motion, uh, Jesse, aye. Thank you, Connie. I do you have to have two. Do we need two separate ones? What? No. No. This okay. is this is one application. Yeah, we should be no, okay. No, it's two applications. Oh, it is. Two you know, it's a different building. We're going to get to that in a minute. We're this is the part. So Connie's a yes, right? Yes. Aye. Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, Diane. No. Okay, Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. That motion carries four in favor, one opposed. Now let's go check at the Mr. other Chair, building. Yes. I had a question, Ms. Holly. Um, yes. Mickey referenced the historic photo, and I was curious if, if he had that available that he could email that to me or let sure me know where does. to get it. I, I, I will look for it again, Holly. I found it, I'm pretty sure, on the NHA's website for historic photos, but I'll, I'll look again okay. and try to send you what I can find. Thank you. I appreciate it. All Thank right. you, Mr. Chair. Thanks a lot. And uh, I'm sure when the two of you get it, could you send it to Alex? Please. I will be doing that. <laughs> Very good. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's move along to the building number two now. This is the last one. Alex, why don't you start into it just so we're moving sure. into your... Um, so this building, um, the condition of the exterior is a little bit more deteriorated 
um, as you can see in the photos. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so what we're basically suggesting is replacing the entirety of the, the, the shingles on the exterior, um, the window casings, the windows themselves, um, basically right down to the sheeting. The, the, the vents at the, the top of the gable, we replace those. The roof seems to be in good condition. So we would replay, re leave that in place, but the gutters, the wood downspouts would essentially be replaced in kind. Okay, so the only thing that I can tell that's okay. not considered a like-kind replacement would be the exchange of what are certainly going to be single glaze windows right now, correct? Uh, well, those um, in keeping with the rest of the uh, the other building, um, the town hall, we would propose to do this as well as an SDL with no. a spacer. I, I, I get that part, but the windows that are in place right now are single glaze, correct? Yes. Okay. So we're going to have the same sort of discussion I can anticipate because everything else that you're talking about is a like kind replacement. As long as you document that you're replacing it the way that it was, yep. we're going to be okay with it. But where where we get into the gray area is how to deal with the windows. But now, having said that, I would like to hear from Holly and then from Nikki. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for the record, this is the a former police station uh, during the 50s. I actually have a photo of um, Officer Wendell Howes um, standing in front of this building in the 50s from NHA. Uh, obviously, the proposal with this would be the, the trim in the windows and gutters. Um, let's see. As the town building, um, my only real issue uh, on this is the window survey that's required, as I do think that the town should lead by example. Um, other than that, uh, I have no concerns on the proposal. Thank you, Mr. That's Chair. That's great. Thank you, Holly. Mickey? Yeah, other than the um, similar window issue, we have no concerns. Okay. Now, I, I, will, I will want to turn this over to the board, but I just had a thought. Like, the price of admission to give us the, the mock-up window with the simulated divided lights on this building is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than to do it on the big town building windows. So if we are talking about doing a mock-up and testing it in the field, I think that this would be the building to do it on, not the big brick building. Well, except that the brick is a different application, well, sort of, isn't it? Well, with the, kind with the mortar it has brick mold it. and that sort of thing. But you know, the other thing is, this building is actually closer to the street than the town building is. Right. The town so building has like some range, space around it. But anyway, board members, your your opinion. Same board. I I have to say so. The old uh, police chief was um, Oliver Howes. And I just thought it was interesting that it's not Oliver Wendell Holmes being the police house. I know it was Howes because I remember him. I mean, he used to, I mean, back when police officers would offer to drive you home if you looked like you were staggering on the sidewalk. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think race. <laughs> I think Ray's idea of, of <clears throat> trying the Green Mountain on this building is a great idea. So I would go along with that. Um, Abby, thank you. Diane? No, that's a good window to stick a window in. So that's, might as well give it a try. Okay. Thank you. Jesse Dutra? Uh, sounds good to me. All right, Connie, what do you think? Me too. Sounds All right, good. so we're, we're going to motion for some revisions, but I think that, you know, the clear message is we really need to take some baby steps on this whole thing. Um, this is a very major uh, sort of change or potential change in the HDC's policy towards windows. And we, we really need to uh, vet this like crazy. So um, we'll give you a chance to discuss it with um, your friends at the town. Um, can I have a motion? 
Oh, are we going to make the motion to try out the window? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my motion to uh, install one of the Green Mountain windows. Uh, it's a great motion. It? Yeah, that's super. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, all right, that's Abby's motion. On that motion, Diane. Hi. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Jesse? Sorry. Hi. Very good. And Connie? Aye. Very good. And Abby, on your motion? Aye. I'm in favor. All right. Thanks, Alex, for uh, that. And we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. All right. Night, night. Oh, uh, let's see where we are on this agenda. So now we're going to do some sun wind stuff for yes. a lot of solar at the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> we can switch up the board now. We still have Abby, Diane, and myself. And let's do Carrie, if you're still there. Yep, I'm here. Yeah. All right. And I'm back. what's, oh, Val's back. Oh, thanks. Right. Unless you don't want me to be back. No, no, I, 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 no, you're, you're fine. Um, so Carrie and the rest of the board. So let's go. 67 Sparks. <laughs> Hello, good evening. This is Tim with Sunwind. Hey, right. Tim. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Go ahead. Tell us about 67 Sparks. Okay. Um, we are looking to put some solar panels on the um, east, southeast facing dormer of this building. Um, two rows on the dormer roof, um, all black, and it's a... Um, dark colored roof i don't recall if it's black i believe it is um, but it is a dark roof looks to be a black roof from the pictures i provided it's interesting so did you say two rows yeah on the dormer um there'll be oh so it will fill the dormer yes correct gotcha i yep. thought you were just doing part of the dormer no, no, uh, okay. just the, that one side of the dormer on the uh, the southeast facing side. All right. Um, okay. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go straight to the board on this. Okay. Who's brave? Who Who's intrepid? What? Who wants to jump in? To the I court? will. Oh. Okay. Since uh, I deal with solar every yes. week on Thank the solar you. committee, <clears throat> this is an application that is appropriate. Um, yes, you can see it, but it's on the shallow roof pitch of the dormer. It's going to fill the entire dormer side to side and the roof color is black. Hmm. Thank you, Tim. Checks a Thank lot you, of boxes. All right. Val, thank you. Um, who's next? I'll go. It's not on the front of the building either. So there's another pro for it. And right across the way is the big windmill. Oh, How about that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> two, right. two, two forms of solar or two yeah. forms of alternate energy, alternative yeah. energy. Carrie, thank you. Um, Diane? I will before it it's, oh, it's great fulfills all our requests for the solar panels okay that's good to hear thank you abby she's not on it oh she, she's not on oh it. that's right um shucks it was uh, carrie uh who am i missing let's see diane abby you is that it i got everybody Jesse. i did get everybody Okay, yeah, and I'm I'm fine with this for all the reasons that have already been said. So, can I have a motion? I just want to make sure we have the right amount of people. So There's Ray. You do, Diane, Val, Ray, Carrie. Right. Oh okay. no, Jesse. we don't. Okay, okay I'm on it. We yeah. need Jesse. Oh, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse, you're good. I'm good. All right, can I have a motion? I'm close to Motion to approve is submitted. Thank you, Val. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Diane. Aye. Val on your motion. Aye. Very good. I'm in favor. Motion carries. Next one. 69. Thank you, Walt. Yep. Um, 69. So 
this one checks, I think, most of the boxes, maybe not all. Um, it, there are some panels on the detached garage um, that is um, to the east side of the property. Uh, the other panels are on the rear dormer um, facing opposite sparks. Um, so uh, black on black, again, black panels, black roof. Okay. Um, I, I'll go. I have a yeah, question please, for no. Tim. Yep. Tim, the, the only um, side that we're not seeing is the side that you're putting the panels on. Is it a dormer or is it just a flat roof? Oh, yeah, that is a dormer. Dormer. Okay. And yep, just um, for, for protocol, the, the little building needs a separate application, but that's just, you know, process. Gotcha. I'm okay with this as well for the same reasons. Okay. It, it, just a, maybe a, a note on this. Maybe what we do is we just call this the main building and we'll keep that smaller uh, shed building separate. I'll do a yeah. separate garage. application for that. Yeah, the garage building there. I'll keep that as a separate app. So this would be for the main building. Okay. And just to clarify, it's one big dormer, not individual like the front. Correct. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. So Val, you're okay. Yeah. All right, Carrie. Yes, and the little building could be on staff approval as a separate application. You could do that. Is that yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Definitely. We'll we'll include that in the motion because then we that'll simplify things. All right. Thank you. Carrie, mm -hmm. thank you. Jesse. He's gone. Oh, I'm I can be on the side. I, oh, I'm okay I'm, with it. All right. Okay, good. Diane, anything? No, I agree. All right. So Carrie, I think you can make the motion because you kind of get the crux of it. Okay. Motion to approve the main house as submitted and to approve staff by staff, a second application for the little building that was included in this. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so on Carrie's motion, Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Carrie on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, 71 sparks. Oh, okay. Um, again, this, these panels are showing on the, the southeast facing roof of the building, uh, black roof, black panels. Um, this one is set back from the street. Um, it is somewhat visible, um, but I think it checks most of the boxes for your requirements. Most, if not all. Um, so. Yeah, go for it. Uh, it's the front of the building. <laughs> Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. check that box. Okay, got you. Um, and I just yeah. want to note: look Thank at the you. shallow roof pitch on this building. I know the shallow it's really roof pitch shallow. is enough to make it's like space. a three and twelve roof pitch. <laughs> it was built in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why couldn't that go on the back? It's that faces west. That probably gets more sunlight than northeast. Uh. Yeah. It's a little northwest compared to southeast, um, really, is how that one sits. There is a chimney there. It's got a little shading from the chimney. It, it could be done. It's not the ideal scenario, but it could be done. Well, hang on now. Let's see. Um, who hasn't spoken on this application? <laughs> I thought it was building two. We heard from Val. We heard from Carrie, right? Yeah. Abby? I said, why don't you put it on the back? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Diane. And Diane? Yeah. Uh, that's what I would do, too. Put it on the back side? Yeah. This is right. First, this so um, what do you think about that, Tim? Uh, that would work. We, we, we can go with that. Well, if, if that's the way it, it, it gonna, has to be. It's going to get you an approval. <laughs> mm. It's such a low pitch roof. I and know. It's set well, it back so light. It <laughs> and it's set lighter. back so far from the street. Or have they re -roofed it? Yeah, it's funny. If there was another house built in that foreground there, um, <laughs> you know, we probably wouldn't be discussing this so much. Yeah. But there it is. Um, 
What's the pleasure of the board here? Well, is the roof a light color? It looks like this roof is particularly light compared to all the rest. It does. Um, that way. Which is a little... Sorry. It does look to be a lighter color. It's it older. It's probably dry. a little bit faded out. If it was a black, it's probably more of a gray now. I don't think it's black. No. No. Looking at the context, you know, the other roofs around it, it's definitely lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Can we maybe hold this one over? Let's do that. Yeah. I, I just want to say, um, you know, it's on the front, and that's one of our cardinal points. And this face house is visible. visible. And yes. yeah, it's come up with a, another solution. Here, let, let's let's have a motion to hold, and then we can move to the other ones. Okay, so moved. All right, so Abby's made a motion to hold this application. Um, on that motion, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thanks, Val. Aye. Very good, Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, let's move along to 75. See if we have better luck there. I'm I'm doing my best to keep yes. up. Okay, uh, 75. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm sure you all love this one. Um, um, no, wait. This is on the front. Are, are, <laughs> <laughs> it's, are you it's, being facetious? Not not at all. Not at all. Not um, it's at hidden all. by okay. a, it's hidden by a lovely tree. No. Uh, a couple of trees. Um, okay. Checks all the boxes. Totally appropriate. No, no it doesn't. No. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm you are being facetious. I'm trying. This is the problem okay. with Zoom is facetiousism doesn't come across. It doesn't come across as well. No. And my camera's off. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this one, I mean, I, I wasn't so fond of this one when I submitted it anyway. Um, it's it's not really a, a great um, solar candidate just with the tree in the front. It's it's not going to make really great power anyway. Um hey. The tree is not that. What do, you, mm. what do you want us to do with this? Um, let's hold it. Okay. Okay. Motion Please. to hold. There we go. Because yeah. I, I do want to get to your other stuff here. Um, all right. So this was that 75? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Abby's made a motion to hold 75 um, Sparks Avenue. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Very good, and I'm in favor. All right, see what you can do with that one, Tim. Now let's go to 89 Pleasant. 89 Pleasant, I should say. Okay. All right, yeah, this one is... Um, the front of the building. I, I guess it would be the front of the building. Um, doing so well. I know it, yeah, we, we, we were batting a thousand. Um, it is... Um, a black roof, black shingles, black roof, front of the building. Uh, uh, can't give you much else on that one. Wait, wait. So it I see it, it's it's in line with all the other guys, but it's just accessed off of Pleasant. Correct. Comes off of Pleasant. Yeah. Can we see more photographs? And I guess I can look them up. I have a. There's a couple in the app. Um, there's one from Pleasant, and they believe that, yeah, there's one from Sparks as well. Or oh, watch it sink. Yeah, because that's going to save the planet. Uh, you. <laughs> that's okay. a pretty Pleasant. View. You can't see. Oh, it. yeah. Wow. Right there. Visibility from Pleasant. But also, Remember, it's a light roof. It is a light lighter roof. roof. Yeah. Oh, shucks. All right. Um, okay, guys, I think I know where it's going, but your your comments. Val, you want to begin? No, I, you know, I don't think that our rules are egregious. Uh, you know, it's a few things that we're asking. Uh -huh not on the front of a building and preferably a dark roof. If this wasn't the front of the building, I could overlook that the roof is brown instead of black, maybe. But mm. we can't pick and choose and make exceptions here and there. It, it has to be a steadfast 
situation where we agree or we don't agree and forget the rules. Okay. I think there can be an exception when the building is completely invisible I from anywhere, that. but this one is very visible from everywhere. So it does go against yeah. all the basic rules and the front and the back. It's visible. Gotcha. Um, can we hold it? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to hold because also I want to drive by all of this. I didn't get this far in viewing and I'd like to take a look at everything and sort of so, so I'd like to um, take a motion, make a motion for, to hold and um, for a view for anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Abby. Okay. So Abby's made a motion to hold for some potential revisions and a view um, on that motion, Val. Hi. Thank you, Diane. Uh, let's try Carrie. Aye. Very good. Abby. Aye. And Diane, you there? Yeah, I'm here. And it's oh, an aye. Okay, aye. very good. Thank you. No, that's good. Um, all right. That's uh, it for me. That's Thank it you. For you. Thanks, Tim. Um, Great night. For revisions. Thank you. Um, all right. So, Val. You got I, some... I would like to do the Sun Island ones if I can first because they're chomping at the bit. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. How, what, how much time do we have? And d does anybody know that we only have seven minutes? Yeah. This no, let, let's see what we can do here. Um, you know, all right. So let's see. Val's off this. Um, Connie, are you still there? Yep. Okay, so Connie. 5A. Connie, Carrie, Abby, Diane, myself. All right. Um, okay, Val, hit it. Okay. Um, Sun Island storage. Yes. Out by, you know, behind the airport yeah. area there. Right. Uh, when they built these storage buildings, they, the HDC required that three sides oh, yeah. be shingled and mm. the interior walls are metal. Mm. They're getting ready to want to re-shingle or reside, and they're asking if we can change to just have all metal. And given what's happened in the area since these were built, um, there's a lot of metal structures now, so they're hoping that there'll be a change of mind with these. So okay. one side is metal, the other three are shingled. They'd like to make them all metal. I'm ready when you're, when you're- Can I, can I just ask a procedural question here? Val, are we talking about one building or are we- Yeah, I have ap applications for each one. Actually, the third one I didn't submit at the same time. So oh, so it's not, a, it's not multiple buildings. It's only- No, the no, two no, no. It's, this is building one, which yeah. you're looking mm -hmm. at now. Okay. One building two. I just wanted to see that. Again. All right. So very good, Abby. You said you. you were I'm right. good with it. You're good with it. Okay. Good. Um. Let's see, Carrie. I don't know. We just made somebody else do shingle. That was a two-story building. This is a one-story building. Have you thought about like vertical barn board to gray out and be cheaper than metal, but not metal? Cheaper than shingle. I mean, sorry, cheaper than shingle, but not metal. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because the metal is just really ugly. And, and we've just recently told somebody they couldn't have it. Where? Um, that was, uh, was it on Old Song Macy's, Macy's, Macy's Road? Yeah. Macy's Road Macy's and yeah. And yep. And it was a two story building, though. So I'm on the fence here. Well, uh, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, have you guys view? Well, okay. and then that's a great idea because how many of these elevations are actually visible from a public way? Yeah, yeah I, I think so. it's important to see what the context is now. So I would be willing to hold. Yeah, I think the context is more commercial than Macy because yeah. there there is actually a community off Macy um, yeah. that I think I might have made that. Shingle yeah. so what do you think about that? Yeah. Okay, I'll <laughs> drive by there for sure. Yeah, and I think that you know maybe maybe it's not all four sides. Maybe it's 
three sides. I don't know. Um, so did, is that a motion from someone? Yeah. I'll make that motion okay. for you. And is that for both of the applications? Yes, yes, yeah. please. Um, okay, so and I will both... ask in the meantime about the barn board so that when we reconvene, I might know that. Yeah, interesting. So for, fi for 5A and 9. Correct. Um, yes. All right, so that's Abby's motion, both for 5A and 9 Sun Island Road. On Abby's motion, Diane. Uh, let's try Connie. Aye. Thank you. Carrie. Aye. Very good. Abby. Aye. Aye. There's Diane. Okay. That was for both. Uh, I'm in favor too. So Val, let's see, do we have any time left? Do you want to no, do this? Not, five, no, not five either. meter. No. Okay. It's oh, Hey guys, we have three minutes and I noticed that we have about 30 minutes to approve. We have <laughs> January 3rd, 10th, 12th, 17th, 24th, and 26th. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, uh, Stephen requested to hold three and 10, January three 3rd and 10th minutes for edits. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then could I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 12th, 17th, 24th, and 26th, holding the 3rd and the 10th? Yeah. Okay, that's Diane's motion. So moved. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, on that motion, Abby. Aye. Very good. Val. Aye. Very good. Um, Carrie. Aye. And Diane. Aye. Aye. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in favor. All right, guys. Uh, oh, and we need, we, I guess we need a motion to adjourn, don't we? Where's John McClellan? Yeah. Motion and, to adjourn, John. Okay, okay, so John has just made a motion to adjourn. On that motion, Val. Aye. Very good, Abby. Aye. Very good, Jesse. Aye. Very good, Connie. Aye. Very good, Carrie. Aye. <laughs> and that was I'm in Diane's favor. motion, right? What? Uh, was it <laughs> I don't know who made the motion, honestly. Oh, Good night, everyone. Good night.